All right. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the uh, welcome to St. Lotus Presents Draft Number Two here on the St. Lotus MTG channel. I'm Eric. I'm Stephen. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a, a draft today. Um, the folks, the fine folks at the uh, the other draft group here in St. Louis are are doing a VRD today. Uh, Mark is over there drafting with them, and uh, we figured if there's a VRD, why not talk about it, right? It just it just seems Absolutely. like it makes sense. <laughs> And this isn't part of our normal uh, set of quarterly, uh, our own quarterly group. This is the second group in St. Louis that kind of started up uh, a lot of some ju local judges and other things. And other than Mark, all of the, I think most of these, and maybe Kevin has had one other, most of these people, this is their second VRD. So the, the first one being the first St. Louis Presents. Yeah, we are. So we are working with a, a, a group of players who might be slightly less experienced than the folks that you've seen on the uh the saint lotus channel before so if you see if you see a lot of experimentation if you see a lot of cards that are 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 out of the ordinary something you might not be used to that's okay steal that idea for later. oh yeah and 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 sometimes we are sometimes the best way to get a fresh uh fresh eye on the format is by getting some uh to get some new information is from a fresh eye on the format so I'm sure these folks will have something to teach us. They are drafting their seats right now. But before we get started, I just wanted to do a quick a quick recap of what it is we do here. So we're going to be drafting <coughs> decks, limited decks from the Vintage Legal Card Pool. And if you imagine the Vintage Legal Card Pool as just a set of one of each card that exists in that card pool, all laid out on, uh, I guess, a very, very large table, maybe maybe the floor of your home. If it'll Pretty fit. large. <laughs> and then in in order, everybody goes around and, and picks one card at a time. But we do a snake draft where the the person who picks first, you know, then we go we have somebody who picks first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then the person who picks eighth picks again, and then it goes back seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and so on. So the person who picks first doesn't have an undue advantage. Steven, what else do we need to know about this format before we get started? So it is a limited deck then. Um, so you're going to have one of each, except for St. Lotus uh, as part of our uh, our experimentation and, and our commitment to having fun, uh, have added a couple other things. So self-tutoring cards, so things like Squadron Hawk, uh, actually allow you to play four copies of it. So that, that is one of our uh, extra rules. Uh, draft cards do not function. Technically, they are legal and vintage, but we, uh, because this is a singular pack, or this is not a pack, whatever we've, we 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 have ruled these in as the arcane savant clause, uh, as it was a tutor, a combo that was in. You basically cast that one card and auto won the game, um, and then any number of cards cost a single pick. So we added a rule, for example, uh, ravenous rats. Um, is that the one? Yeah. Whichever. Relentless Rats. Relentless Rats, not Ravenous. Ravenous make you discard a card. Oh, uh, yeah. Relentless Rat, uh, Persistent Petitioners, things like that. Uh, you can pick one, and then I think that you get up to 20 of them is our, our rule at this point uh, for the one, uh, which has been used a few times uh, for some sideboard stuff, basically. But. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now that we've done a quick summary, it looks like the players are ready to draft, so let's head over and get started. All right. Well, ooh, Caterberg has the, uh, so our very own Mark Caterberg has the go seat. Oh, yes. Mar so Mark is Mark is up first. Um, it looks, my understanding is that he had second pick of draft seat. It looks like Alex had the first pick and chose to take the uh, seat eight for the wheel. Yeah. So Mark starting off with, he didn't uh, with the pressure. He didn't want the pressure of that seat one. So the, the the classic opening question is often always the Black Lotus or Ancestral Recall. Um, for a long time, Lotus it was kind of the default, but of recent, Ancestral has crept up into the spot. Oh, and, Patrick passing on the Lotus pressure. Yeah, Lotus Lotus being kicked down the road here. Uh, there is a little bit of a uh, a Lotus curse here in uh, in St. Lotus. People People who pick Black Lotus often do not do quite as well as you might like, but Eric says, you know what, 
I, I can I can beat the curse. I'll take this Black Lotus and Darian following up quickly with Time Vault. What's up? Time Vault's interesting, you know, with uh you know, there's often questions of how how good is it? It seemed to have been falling out of fashion for a little bit, but seems to have picked back up recently into the kind of first round area across multiple groups. So that's not just like this group, that's across all of the groups that we kind of pay attention to. Yeah, Time Vault is uh, is definitely... Oh, no, can't have that. Oh, that's that's what calls already picked. All right, Heidi. <laughs> that is one of the most important things about VRD. Once a card is picked, nobody else can pick it. You have to pick something that is new and unique. Uh, so and our sheet, our sheet turns a nice bright and red there when you do it wrong. Yes, uh, shout-outs to Hyphenated for uh, putting together this, this spreadsheet that, that allows us to... Check for duplicates without too much trouble. The Mox is going nice and early here. We still have uh, Emerald. Oh, never mind. Emerald's gone. Oh, we lost Heidi's pick. Oh, so here comes the Soul Ring and the Pearl. Okay. Alex wheeling some serious fast mana here. That's one of the uh, the advantages of that that wheel is that you are even if you don't get your first pick of, of Moxon or whatever, you're probably going to get, you know, two Moxon or or something like Mox Soul Ring or Mox Mana Crypt that's really going to help you oh. accelerate. He grabs the C there. Emerald C is interesting. Mm. And, you know, fetches normally go prior to uh, the duels. So that's, uh, of course, that, I mean, that could be, you know, just a more experienced group or it could be that he's just got a very solid plan and he, he, needs, that, he needs that mana, he needs that C. Yeah, see, usually going somewhere in round 10. And uh, by contrast, Delta going slightly early top. in round 9. Yeah. Heidi grabs the Tundra. So we've got two duels off, but not none of the fetches to... None of the fetches yet. Uh, generally, fetches are, 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 are of the high, highest value lands. Uh, many, myself included, arguing Prismatic Vista being the best fetch. Oh, yeah. Because uh, it can get any... As you can get any of your uh, basics, and you're you're going to be heavy on the basics. Darian picks up Lotus into. Ooh, yes, go ahead. Oh, I was just a Lotus into D tutor there. <laughs> force of is he just going to take them both? <laughs> yeah, he's, take, he's taking the double force. There, I'm pretty sure. I I like that. We we have a little bit of insight into into what Mark's plan might be here, but but we'll let it play. Oh, hall no, creature. He... All right. So Mark looking to potentially take advantage of some wheel effects here, uh, delete his opponent's draws and get some treasure. Uh, we are having a little bit of a run on the alpha dual lands. Uh, that's one of the phenomena yeah. that tends to occur early in the draft, where somebody picks a fetch land or a dual land, and then everybody else says, oh, geez, I need to pick my fetch lands and or dual lands right now. Black Lotus and Demonic so, Tutor, are we going to see some kind of storm deck here? It's a little early to say. I mean, Lo Lo Lotus is so open in what you can do. Um, we've got a miss, a typo in Bizarre Baghdad. That's what we've got. But now we got it fixed. Grab the Crypt. Darian with the double time going. Ooh, time all, he's got really all the time on his hands. <laughs> Bizarre of Baghdad is interesting. That that doesn't even in most VRDs. I yeah. don't think that even gets drafted. It's okay. Yeah, thirty of sixty. Yeah, I mean, unless you're in the reanimator deck, it just doesn't. You know, it doesn't do what you want it to do most of the time. So, yeah. but so that's probably a pretty good tell. Patrick's going to reanimate some stuff here. Definitely, and one of, one of the most important things about VRD as you're as you're going through the draft and trying to plan things out is uh, is trying to figure out how late you can float cards like this, where where you're thinking. Okay, this card's very important for me, but does anybody else need it? And that's a that's a so we got first walkers off the board with time raveler. Ooh. Um, that means we have the two best walkers still on the board. Oko and Karn, I assume. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Those, I those previously those rated Nars. I previously rated Nars Nars at the second best, but I was wrong. Nars is. Um, so 
Ruby cool. Ragavan Flooded Strand. That is an interesting. Um, <laughs> Ooh, okay. That's trop. Maybe maybe Chad wants a blue I, fetch to go red blue and thinks that yeah. by taking Flooded Strand he can uh, he can make Heidi's deck a little worse. Uh, Alex very shorn up, just kind of open over here with Alex. Nice ring pearl vault tutor. Nothing very wonder, strong there. I wonder if we'll see some sort of like white black disruption deck out of Alex here. Um, I mean, it's, or it could just be a, just took the pearl, take the pearl, and you know the white's unconsequential. I mean, either way. Yeah, I just I you know you know me. I like a white black disruption deck. I can I'm I'm here to hope. It's yeah. a shame that we, we won't get to see these games today because I, I would really love to see that play out. Well, Emerald Sea and Trop is a... I mean, I had really good luck with Bug. I think Bug is a um, a strong combination. Um, I, don't, I don't know what Bug like, picked, but Chad I'd like to see an, <laughs> I'd like to see an Oko here out of him, out of Pete. Uh, right here it would be... Chad pulling the trigger Pete's on the tank oh, for a moment. Turn a little earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this would be a great spot for Oko. Um, Oko or Karn, probably Oko. But my guess is that we'll see Karn go pretty soon as well. Oh. Bless you. Nope, sticking with his lands plan, man. He is shoring up those... Uh... Yeah, Pete just needs one fetch land, and he can really uh, he can really take advantage of all these duels. Scalding Tarn for Chad, so he he says, "I'm just going to pick up two blue fetches before Heidi can get to any of them." Yeah. So maybe maybe American there, maybe uh, maybe just blue red, maybe you know, could be anything. Lavinia Ooh. Azorius Renegade. Here's a statement. That is a statement. She can get that much later, but that definitely is. She wants if you want it, you want it. So, I believe uh, I think Elaine drafted this at one point in one of the Saint Lotuses. Uh, like Saint Lotus two, I think, or one somewhere in there. Somewhere taken yeah, early in the early in the Saint Lotus history, uh, just trying to took it. to hate out on the the fair decks, or the unfair. Yeah, decks, I almost right. took it with in the knowledge pool deck. I almost took Ooh, it once. Oh yeah. All right, so mana drain, a nice fourth, fourth, fourth round value mana drain there. Darian is just drafting. Just it, it seems like Darian is just drafting the best card on the uh, is still available on the table. Like, like whatever whatever has the the highest pick rate is just like, well, Darian's gonna gonna value draft that real quick as as long as it's blue. Um, yeah. All right, so there's the thought sees. Ooh, all right. These these one two mana to four, discard spells four, are really right. yeah one mana discard spells are really valuable in this format and Patrick Patrick says me too with this Inquisition of Kozilek here and Mark exceptionally happy to grab a fourth round force of negation oh my gosh um, that's absolutely delightful and the strip, and the strip mine. mine yep. Patrick Mark is schoolgirl happy right now. Like he, he really likes the he really likes what he's got going on here. Uh, grief's good. You could probably float it a little later, but uh, it is definitely strong. And oh, the fast bond for Eric. Yes, fast bond. Wow, in round five. So counter spell here probably shows he's committing to more blue mana. I mean, yep. in, in my rankings, counter spells generally around the seventh or eighth of the of the spells, just because of the double blue. Yeah. Um, but he's already got the mana drain, so why, you know, I mean, at that point. Yeah, you're, you're, you're double blue for life once you've, once you've got the mana drain, but, uh, but you can pick up cards like Spell Pierce and, and things like that yeah. early that just cost one, one mana and, or, or a little easier to cast. So Heidi's going in on the white blue hate bears. Ooh, I like this. I love a Thalia deck, and Heidi knows that this is a format where everybody's going to try to do unfair stuff, and she says, you know what, you you, you can try. I'll, I'll stop you. 
And Thalia's highlighted in green because Thalia is amazing. Chad is still jumping in on fetches. He's got another <laughs> white fetch, so we're definitely going to have some white with our red. Well, you know, maybe this is the signaling of, of an alliance between Chad and Pete. Maybe they're going to join forces at the end of the draft and, uh, <laughs> and work together with all their fetches and duels. So Liliana of the Veil was one we were discussing a little last night. Ooh, um, this yes. used to be the time where she went uh, quite normally, and then she's kind of dropped off. Um, ah, there's the best planeswalker in the format from Alex. So, oh Mana Vault, so he can turn one that right in the right hand. Oh, with a grim monolith, he's we, going big. I definitely think you're gonna see that Eldrazi, like Karn, Karn with Eldrazi, seems pretty good. Karn with Eldrazi, or we could simply be seeing like a big mana artifact deck with Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Grim Monolith. That's true, true. Alex has a lot of room to run here. It could be, it could be either, yeah. frankly. It, very open. Fatal push. That's... Ooh. I can't support this. I can't either, unfortunately. I understand. I mean, there's a million... There's a million removal spells, and... I understand and there's the an Oko on the board. I some creature removal, but this is, uh... This is, this is not it for me. Fatal push uh, tends to go much later and usually go, it goes unpicked about half the round. Yeah, I mean, there's an Oko available still. I mean, <laughs> Oko is just still out there hanging out. Yeah, I know it's killing my soul. Like Whoa! it is. <laughs> Darian picks I'm a Mox Oko guy. Oh wow, I'm intrigued. I wonder what he wants. That I wonder if he's going to overvalue Wasteland and mm, maybe. I mean, Strip Mine's off the table. So. Waste, but 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 Steven, Wasteland seems like it would be so good in this format, right? We we've got we're we're playing vintage. The, the Wasteland is so good in these old formats. What's what's wrong with it here? Well, I mean, you got to imagine that this is a, a draft format where everyone only gets one of one of something. So you're not playing. You know, everyone's going to have their fourteen to sixteen lands, but of that, most players are only going to have two to three non basics, most likely. Um, you know, three tops and, you know, where you might get like a Pete who, who goes a little more in or occasional lands deck. But a lot of the times the wasteland, you know, you're going to hit a land, but you're not going to hit the same value you're going to hit off of it normally. And, you know, the fact that you're going to possibly disrupt your mana base for it, it's not as powerful as say a strip mine, which is just going to wreck people. Um, you know, so, and if they know you have the wasteland, they can play it around it much easier, just like they do in regular formats. It's just so much easier to play around it. Oh, I'm just not going to fetch up my, my dual turn one because the wastelands, you know, he might, he has wasteland because these are also open list matches, right? You can see, you know, their list, you know, exactly what they have. Um, right. Not only do I know what every card you've drafted, but I do know at the end of the, at the end of the, the draft, before we start playing, I do get to see what your deck list is, so that's a, a pretty great distillation of why 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 Wasteland is significantly less powerful. Caterberg picking up a, a Narset to go along with that Hull Breacher. I wonder if we're going to see a wheel anytime soon, or if Mark is just trying to shut down unfair draw effects. Yeah. Uh, reanimating Grief is a powerful combo. I, I've had before where I turned one, uh, evoked Grief, and then reanimated Grief. Uh, uh, all, all on the first turn, which was a pretty hot way to get a big 4-3 body and make them discard two. Uh, you know, you paid a little life for it, but... Wandering Winder pointing out, we have one player with Fast Bond and Zurn Orb, one player with Strip Mine, and one player with Crucible of Worlds. Things getting a little weird yeah. already, and Caterberg, Caterberg picking up that Spell Pierce I was talking about, followed by Animate Dead for Patrick. We're definitely yeah. going into Reanimator here for Patrick. I think... Yeah, Mark had some ideas, and he he's excited to try out his idea. So oh, yeah. uh, he, he and he's very happy with how this is playing out as it gets he gets to stick to his plan. This looks a lot like a spreadsheet I saw in Zoom yesterday with Mark. Yes. Really? So yeah, I I love reanimate the reanimate grief plan. I play uh. I play Living End in Modern, so I'm I'm very familiar with bringing grief back from the graveyard and getting people. We saw, we briefly so we saw, saw Ramen of Excavator pop up for a second and then disappear. Snapcaster yeah. Mage for Darian. Obviously something that goes very well with Time Walk here. I'm surprised to see it go quite this late. And it's a late snap. It feels, it feels good. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Yeah. Obviously something that uh, Gatorberg would have liked to have with his Ancestral Recall, but he's got higher priorities right now, it looks like. And uh, 
Wild. Stuff that have been good for Heidi, assuming she's going to have stuff like uh, Swords of Plowshares and you know things like that. So, Ooh, so Soul Herder. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm in. It's time for Blue White Blink. Uh, this is the second yeah. time, I believe, Soul Herder's ever been drafted in a VRD that we have a record of anyway. And uh, Soul Herder, of course, uh, just a, a, a fantastic... A fantastic commander and cube card really supports the blue white blink archetype. Very excited to see what it has going on here. So Ch Chad sticking with his fetches galore plan. Um... And Pete on worldly tutor. He doesn't. He doesn't need any fetch lands. He's got. He's got. He's got worldly tutor. Forget those fetch lands. Yeah. Oh man, Alex over here in heaven grabbing a, a wheel Urza Saga Talarian Academy. Wow. This so Alex needs. I mean, he can draft it much later, but Alex with Academy and Karn, like you know, there's there we need a nice uh, we need a nice pinhead prism here. Swifty, I wonder if Pete has figured out he doesn't need to take Oko anytime soon because clearly nobody else cares about Oko. Uh, and he takes Reggie, yeah, running, running Registrar. I yeah, I 100% I agree. I, I'm Rod Registrar's a beating, man. I mean, like people are going to have some trouble doing with that, yeah. especially if he gets like a bird where he can get it out turn two. But uh... Pete's looking to go hellbent here. He's got the Liliana of the Veil. He's got the Rotting Registrar. He just doesn't care about having cards in his own hand. He's going to beat you up I mean, with this. The thing about Oko is... Oko is just like I have never felt out of a game when I resolved an Oko. Like no matter how far I am behind, I I drop Oko and like I'm back in the game. Yeah, <laughs> it's a deeply unreasonable card. Chad is killing me. I don't know what's going on, but I love it. He's just like I am committed to. I'm going to have the best mana base in VRD history. <laughs> like Chad is going to have the best mana base in VRD history, and his deck is going to be comprised of Ragavan and twenty two sideboard cards. But his, he'll be able to cast every single one of them. No, I mean I don't think anyone's gonna grab it. Like maybe is he gonna is he just gonna grab like the kind of red white blue aggro? Ooh, there yeah. we go. That Darian grabbing a letter shredder here. Yes, uh, letter so shredder. I, I love grabbed it. A later letter shredder in, in one of the St. Lotuses, and then Dom grabbed it much higher. I don't think this high, but uh, uh, this card I I went all in on early on at like three bucks each for foils, and I, I'm doing pretty well on them. Uh, it is the darling of every format right now. Yeah, what a fantastic card. Ledger Shredder, an amazing new addition to basically every format. I think it's going to be great in VRD. Very excited to see where it goes. Uh, none of the decks, none of the drafts that uh, Ledger Shredder has been picked in have been uh, indexed yet in, in, our, in, our, in our bot. So it appears unpicked, but... It ought to be going pretty early. This makes sense. Eric picking up a late Misty Rainforest and Dark Ritual for Patrick. So Patrick committing to this. I mean, this uh, is normally where the fetch run would normally start, actually. So Eric picking up a Misty Rainforest, about where they normally he'll begin. <laughs> Caterpillar grabbing a loot tree. Yeah, that's, that's solid. I think it's early. I don't know. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's free, so... Lutri, of course, a, uh, a fantastic card in a format where you're generally drafting a singleton deck, with the exception, of course, of those self-tutoring or uh, any number cards. Uh, but but uh, I don't think Mark Mark cares too much about that. Lutri, of course, one of the one of the best cards in the format, as you can tell, because it's been picked twenty out of nineteen times, according to our bot. Absolutely, <laughs> you know. It gets picked more often than it's available. There, I think there was a draft. There was a draft that used the Akoria cards before they were uh, technically legal. So I think that's why we're seeing twenty of nineteen. But Lutri, of course, a friendly little otter lives in your sideboard. Sometimes you pay three and you get to use it as a uh, as a dual caster mage. Sometimes you don't. That's fine. Yeah. So. I'm assuming Mark's still sticking to his plan here. He may have all of this good stuff and be like, you know what? I'm just going to draft good stuff. Yeah, we we might see we might see the plan that we've been talking about that will, you know, we'll keep a secret until Mark reveals it because it's more fun that way. Or we might just see blue red spells, you know. 
Yeah, definitely common opponent. Like we said earlier, this is th these were a lot of folks who are you know not as tapped into the St. Lotus scene, maybe maybe not drafting in the Discord, uh, learning the format and having a great time. So worrying about ADP is less important than enjoying what we've got in front of us. Strongly agree. Days for Caterberg, followed by Exhum for Patrick. And now we've got sort of the three requisite uh, reanimation effects. Patrick's going to need to start picking up some more enablers and some big creatures. That's the problem with the reanimator decks sometimes is that balance, right? Is that mm -hmm. balance between those three is, you know, you either see too many targets, too many spells, and what I often see is not enough enablers. Now, he's got the bizarre. Uh, yeah. I mean, and that, that definitely helps. He's got the bizarre, and it's not like anybody's going to pro probably going to uh, contest him on Entomb, though who knows what Pete's yeah. going to do. Um, but but I'm I'm sure Patrick will find some other ways to discard or or entomb things. I do like that he's leaving the uh, the big creatures for later. I think that's a wise choice. Right. I mean, there's so many good reanimate targets. You don't have to. I mean, you lose one, whatever. You you just <laughs> you know. Right, especially now they keep printing more. Oko coming right. I mean, off other, the other, board in round nine for Darian. Oh, Darian, thank you. Oh, Ledger Shredder, Snapcatcher, Ledger Shredder, Oko. Like, Darian's Darian's just got a sick list of cards here that <laughs> Armageddon, wow. Heidi laying it on the table, and balance for Chad. Eric with the fast bond Zern orb doesn't even get the balance to go with it. Oh, God, this is killing me. I love it. Wow. So much, so much tomfoolery. I love that we're fighting so hard over this stuff. This is great. What's Chad going to do with that balance? He's going to wreck face. Okay. All right. I figured it out. Bear with me. We play our Vidalcan orrery. We crack all our fetch lands, hold priority, and cast balance in response. <laughs> okay, now I want to do that in another format. Like, I, balance isn't illegal in Commander, but I want to do that really bad. So. <laughs> oh. Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. Is that the five drop? That is no, the... No, that's, 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 that's Splashiok. That's OG. Okay. Is, so yeah, Ashiok Nightmare Weaver is the, the original, not the Dream Run... Terrain Render, Pete is looking to exile cards from the opponent's library and maybe put some creatures onto the battlefield. And Alex, wheeling Ancient Tomb and Urza. Jeez, he's just got all the artifact synergies that he wants except for that Tinker. Yeah, he's just all in on the Urza plan here. Urza Saga, Talarian Academy, Gosh. you know, feeling good. Pants Karn would look pretty good in Alex's deck as well right now. That's right, uh, Wandering Winder. Uh, uh, Nightmare Muse is the five cost one from uh, Theros Beyond Death. So Splashy Oak definitely sees some play. Uh, you know, the the three mana one that stops you from people from tutoring has has normally seems above her, but Splashy Oak's definitely very good. She doesn't affect the table immediately as part of the problem when she drops, so you, you've kind of got to be ahead. But uh, if you're even a slight bit ahead, she will seal a game away pretty quick. Yeah, as long as you can protect Ashiok uh, and yourself. Ashiok, Ashiok yeah. Nightmare Weaver will get you where you need to go. I did initially think, oh, Ashiok Dream Render, that makes sense. But I was wrong. Blue players are loving all this fighting over lands cards. Absolutely, Iron Claw Orc. Uh, Alex and Darian are cleaning up right now, as is Caterberg. And Patrick as well. Yeah. Patrick's just, just uncontested. Uh, except for that Liliana <laughs> of the Veil, maybe, in his own little lane, doing whatever he wants to do. Yeah, Lily the Veil is very good in the reanimator deck because it, it puts pressure on them too. But Patrick got plenty of good stuff for his trouble. He got that that grief. He got the, the Inquisition. Oh, glimpse. I, I, I can't. I don't know what Pete's doing. Oh, but... Pete's looking to mill people. This is Glimpse the Unthinkable. Now, these days, Glimpse the Unthinkable looking more and more like the Tasha's hideous laughter we have at home, but it is only two mana, so maybe he's going to self-mill. Who knows? Chad picks up a path, another strong removal spell. We already saw swords go last a couple rounds ago. Esper Sentinel for Heidi. Prismatic Vista for Darian. Is this a late Vista? A very late Vista, yeah. I would, I would say it's a very late Vista. 
picked in every uh, not too late, but I think it's it's been creeping up and up. I've seen it go in like round three or four recently. Yeah. I mean, it's the best fetch. It really is. You just, um, you have a lot of basic lands. You don't have to draft those. Unless they're snow covered. But that's different. If I'm Eric, what do I want here? I'm not even sure what the plan is yet. It's land something. Chrome Mox? And Patrick snaps off the Entomb immediately. So we've got Mox Diamond, Chrome Mox, yeah. Ottawa, nice, nice Ottawa pick up there. Yeah, these Kami Diamond early. are fantastic. They're having a huge effect I, on this I think, format. I think you could have waited on that with this group, but this group's already shown to be... The problem, the problem is... So Mark's got a problem in this draft, right? Mm -hmm. And that is that Mark is used to drafting at tables that are a little more focused and like have playoff of meta knowledge. This group doesn't have any meta knowledge and they're kind of wild cards, right? Yeah. So for an experienced drafter to come in with a group like this, um, you are putting yourself at some risk because like your cards that you think you can float, you might not be able to float obviously. Right. Like as we've seen. So Mark picking up Wasteland as well. He must be seeing, uh, we've got Chad with the lands. We've got Eric with this, 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 uh, this fast well, and thing. Even if you don't main it, like keeping it off of the other, the, the fast bond and crucible deck is, is not a bad move there. Right. And it, it's going to be good. It's going to be good for you. Um, you know, it's probably early, but at this table, I feel it, it's good. Ooh, the nice Besaja who endures pick up yeah, there from Darian. Darian definitely. again, really showing some focus. Good work here from Darian. Darian is, uh, you know, for, for all the talk about people not being as in tune with meta knowledge, paying attention to average draft position, Darian, uh, the counter example here, he's clearly done his homework. Yeah. yeah. Oko time walk's going to be yeah. sick. Not a, not a slight, by the way, on any of the other players, just that, you know, Darian has chosen a different approach to prep. Uh, mana Confluence for Eric, trying to cast whatever he wants. Solitude for Patrick is interesting. What's that about? Now, now, yeah. hang on. Let's, let's all hang on. Just, just one moment, please. That's a secret lair card. Does that even exist yet? I can't even look that, that one up. Officially, does that officially count yet? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> It's in the spreadsheet. We got Chun Li. One sec, I have to. It is. It is VRD legal. I have to get. I have to get Scryfall up. I'm Scryfalling it myself. Yep. Yeah. Scryfall says vintage, not legal. When Chun Li enters know. the battlefield, exile up to X target instant cards from your graveyard, where X is the number of times Chun Li was kicked. Put a kick counter on each of them. When Chun Li attacks, cop each exiled card you own with a kick counter on it. You may cast the copies. Okay, so it sounds like these folks have decided that even though this secret lair drop hasn't actually shipped yet, that we can play with the Street Fighter cards. So I'm very excited to see what Heidi does with Chun Li. <laughs> I mean, the spreadsheet says it can. Yeah. The spreadsheet's not flipping out on it though. Spreadsheet's happy. It's legal. What you know? Yeah. And, and and honestly, one of one of the best things about this format is that you know you and your group can decide like whatever works for you works for you. If you want to play legacy legal, modern legal, pioneer legal, you can do all of those things. If you want to say any card that has been previewed in you know is legal, that's fine. You can do that. Whatever works for your group is is totally cool. You there's no. There's no governing body that's that's gonna come come down on you. Should so I'm looking at Pete's deck from last time, and Pete's definitely a wild card uh, in in this format. Interestingly enough, cards that Pete had in his deck last time: Riding Registrar, Diabolic Edict. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, can't take Animate Dead, Pete. That's already gone. Patrick's cornered the market. I've got Nightmare Weep. You're gonna have so to a lot of the same cards. Hang on. Hang on, folks. Oh, no. Don't... Hang on. Chad, you can't pick yet. Back it up. 
P can't take that anime. That anime that's already been picked. He'll have to settle for something like Dance of the Dead. Sorry, what were you saying? I'm saying, looking at the the draft from last time from St. Lotus Presents, uh, Pete picked a lot of the same cards. Uh, oh. He had Ash at Nightmare Weaver. He had Diabolic Edict uh, picked pretty early again. He had Riding Registrar picked in round nine. Uh, so a lot of the same cards kind of looks like he's on the same plan, which did, makes me wonder, is he going to pick the Isle of Walk Walk again? Did he have Turgrid God of Fright last time? Because it looks like that's been drafted once, and I have a guess about who did it. He did. He did Turgrid God of Fright last time. <laughs> you know, I think I think it's really important to respect somebody who knows what they want to play. One of the best things there about you VRB go, is that you can come into the format and say, this is the kind of deck I want to play. And you can almost always find a way to make that work. Um, now he, got, he got glimpsed the unthinkable in 44th pick last time. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he could have uh, held off from uh, where he got it this time. I mean, he with his first five picks, he picked cards other people would want. And then he said, now I can just draft whatever I feel like and it doesn't matter. Chain Lightning yep. for Chad. So we're, we're seeing some burn from Chad here. The path to exile choice, clearly intentional. So Chad, Chad's... I wonder if we're going to see... It looks like all of uh, all of Chad's fetch lands... Oh, no. Yeah, all of Chad's fetch lands get red or white. So I, it looks like we're probably on some kind of Boros aggro plan. Um, how many times have we talked about, though? Like, how many times have we said over the, over the couple years we've done these that if you really wanted to go the burn deck... What you do is you mess everybody up by taking all the lands early and yep. then just draft your stuff. Yep. You know, like this is a strategy we've mentioned a lot. You mess everybody up by just going fetch run completely. Yeah, we've we've talked about this. I think I think that before Chad starts taking lightning bolts and stuff, he should we should we should see red elemental blast and pyro blast. But I like yeah. where Chad's head is at. I like I like the idea of drafting all these uh these fetch lands first. Somebody's finally doing this. Oh, okay. And oh, of Vile Goat. It's happening. Aether Vile and Turning. Yep. It begins. So Erica... Lurus of the Dream Den is interesting. Lurus is really good, but I don't like Lurus in the Reanimator deck because you can't run it as your. I mean, you yeah. can't run it as your thing. I... Unless he's going to go. Like, even with Solitude turns it off. I was like, yeah. unless he's going to go like a value reanimator where he's not. Going for fatties, but that's an interesting one. Yeah, maybe not, this is a value. That's the deck. first pick I don't really like out of Patrick. Uh, and there's Gristlebrand. So I guess yep. we'll see Fatty. what the what the purpose of Luris is here. Delta's crying, it's going down. Delta's like, I'm going thirteenth, I'm wow. I'm crying. That's it. Yeah, polluted Delta. That round nine average definitely not reflective of uh, more recent drafts where it goes in round four or five a lot of the time. Yeah. Fetch lands have been creeping up, up, and up as they prove to be some of the best cards in this format for just making sure you have the mana you need. Darian continuing on this value strategy. What do you think... Uh, Luris does replay Animate Dead. That's very true. That's very true, Wandering Winder. But so far, that's one okay. card... In Patrick's deck, uh, that interacts with. Yeah, players. I mean, a value Lawrence isn't bad. I mean, I, I I've gotten good value out of it in my main, but oh, it's yeah. it's definitely an interest. What do you think Eric's Cavern of Souls is for? I didn't even see it. I don't know. That's I don't know what's going on there. I yeah. like. I mean, I like. I liked the draft so far yeah. uh, there, but. Gitaxian Probe for Darian, Containment Priest for Heidi, a little more hate bear action. I wonder when she'll get down to the uh down to the instant and sorceries, unless unless her plan is to put Armageddon on Chun Li and just get in every turn, which I really like if that's the plan. Oh, that would kill me. <laughs> oh. G probe. Heidi's refusal to capitalize hurts yep. hurting my soul. I'm down with it. And for Chad's. Pyroblast for Chad. It's he's in my head. Good job, Chad. Yeah. Feels like uh feels like a cranberry song up here in here. It's in your head. <laughs> I, I, I But no one's playing zombies. Well Boros, actually no there is. Pete's playing zombies. Boros. Wait, that's not that's not right. Pete's playing zombies with a giant zombie dinosaur. <laughs> Alright. 
Let's Pete get a pick. Yeah, just... I, I do agree with you, though. Like, Pete's just like, you know what? Like, I went one and six last time. I'm going to draft the same cards and do better. Yeah. And I respect that. Pete's. It was Pete, also on, like. Pete knows what he wants. He's here to have fun. Let's have fun. I love it. It was also on, like, four cards last time because he yeah. had a uh, braid as well. Right now, we're and locked Croxa. into a solid three. We've got a good mana base. Smuggler's Copter for Pete. I'm. I'm not sure what the plan is with Smuggler's Copter. It seems like all your creatures are very big, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Alex picking up Dak Fade and the Greatest Thief in the Multiverse. That's, an, that's, a, that's a late Dak. That's uh, probably about four rounds late, I'm guessing. Yeah, a couple rounds. Three. And Manifold Key. Alex says, no Manifold Key for you, Darian. You're going to have to use one of the other 87 keys in this format to untap your time vault. I still haven't seen it done yet, but I still want to see someone do uh, Teferi Who Walks the Sunset with Time with time Vault. Cause... Oh my gosh. I love it. Isochron Scepter for Pete. Not sure what's going on there. And Char for Chad. Char. Yep. We are in... The... We are... <laughs> I am, you know what? Chad's warmed my soul. He 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 he's done the. I'm gonna take all these lands and mess people up, and then take white, red, burn. Just take whatever I want, right? Welcome to the Char Zone, folks. Heidi picking up Walking oh. Ballista before Alex can snap it up. Yeah, might want to do the same with uh, Phyrexian Revoker at this point. Yeah, yeah, Revoker would be really good here. <laughs> endurance for Darian. Darian says I don't want any part of the uh, any part of this reanimator nonsense. Just gonna exile it. Yeah, endurance, super solid aggro hate. Yep. Yeah, it turns out that if you're if you're playing against an aggressive deck, a 3 mana 3-4 body is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like the Deathrite Shaman. Um... Yeah, Mark and I were talking about Deathrite Shaman yesterday, and we came to the same conclusion. It's, it's Deathrite Shaman is good in the format if you want it as graveyard hate, not yeah. if you want it as mana ramp. Yeah, Birds of Paradise, this is not. With only 11 really good fetch lands in this format, I don't really count Fabled yeah. Passage as being good in this format. Um, but we've got the time. He's got the Zern Orb, so I mean, he could always like tap and then sack a land and then get, take his own land. But sure, but that seems risky. That seems risky. So our kind of cruelty, the the second best kind of reanimator target in black. Yeah, this is a a particularly nasty one. Shows up in a lot of formats these days uh, as a fantastic reanimator target that really just puts your opponent on a massive clock. And does something when it enters the battlefield, which is always nice. Mark going with a little hate. He sees Chad, and he says, I'm going to pick up this chill before anybody else can get it. And this dismember. Yeah. Which member? <laughs> you know which one. This one. Patrick picking up him. I like that. Him's good. Him, him's very him? solid. You're, the double, you're, you're committed to black. You know, him's good there. It's about on par. It, yeah. Him's been falling off. Sometimes it doesn't even get taken just because of the double black. Yeah, that makes sense. But Patrick can certainly cast it. Darian says, yeah. I don't I don't want to mess around with this. I'll take Voltaic Key right now. And Heidi with, with more... Leader. Heidi with a Universe love is Beyond theme deck. Oh, that's hilarious. This is the best of those walk, Walking Dead ones, so... It sure is. Rick has, Rick has never been played in VRD, but today that's going to change, folks. Is, are we... Is 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 humans finally going to happen? Is that what's happening here? Is humans finally occurring? Selfless Spirit and Esper Sentinel says otherwise, but uh, Soul Herder... And... Sure. I don't know. <laughs> the rest of them. Yeah. Oh, Can't there's the red. There's the red. Yep. Smart. Yeah, that chill's looking pretty good by Mark over there. Sometimes you got to know when to draft a hate card. Yeah, it's it's okay to pick a powerful sideboard card early if you think, hey, I don't know if I can beat that. 
Just take one yeah. si- one really powerful sideboard card, and now your win rate goes up uh, a solid 5%. Like, all right, sweet. We got there. It's probably more than 5%. Chill's very good. Chill's very, very good. It's definitely okay. not chill. <laughs> Leyline of the Void for Pete. Pete wants to exile all of your nonsense. That's solid. I mean, against Patrick, that's a, that's a solid pick there, I think. Yeah. And we're coming up on our break here. Load With some load for Alex before the break. All right, I'm not sure how long our break is, so I'm just going to keep an eye on my chat here on my phone while we figure that out. But... Uh, Let's take a moment and uh, just talk about what we can see so far here. Um, So I'm looking back at previous drafts, and these folks definitely like their lanes, right? Like Patrick was in Reanimator in the previous draft. He went three mm -hmm. and four with it. Um, So it looks like he's, you know, learned his lessons. He's grabbing some, you know, grabbing stuff a little different. Uh, But he had definitely had a Reanimator plan previously. Pete, no, Um, we're on break. Beats Gung Ho. He's like, I'm taking my mana confluence. It's already been taken. Uh, it looks like we might actually get a remote interview. Pete, you can't. Pete, you can't draft right now. We're on break. <laughs> Pete, stop it. <laughs> um. Uh, it looks like we might be able to get get Mark in here. So for for a quick interview, and you know what? Yeah, might as well. Um. Can I add you? Sounds great. I'll add you to our Discord call. All right, so we're gonna have a little bit of a. We're we're about to have some level of technical difficulties uh, as I try to add Mark to this call, but we're gonna figure it out. It's, it's, gonna, one. it's gonna be fun. All right, we're trying to we're trying to call Mark. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, Mark, how's it going? <laughs> it's going all right. Hopefully, the audio comes through all right. It seems to be going fine. Let me just uh, let me just edit my overlay here to reflect that you are you and not not Stephen. Uh, if only I could be so lucky. <laughs> exactly. uh, is is this is the sound coming through with the? There's wind. I'm sorry. It's coming through just fine. <laughs> Great. Um, so yeah, I my deck, the only card, I, I think I should have maybe taken the time walk. I don't know. I thought about floating that. I thought about taking that, that round. Um, the other cards that I, I really missed, the Cavern of Souls was one that I really wanted. Uh, so I got the Aether Vial instead, which is fine. Um, I'm shocked that I managed to get things like Narset and Lutri where I did. Yeah. Uh, similar strip, strip Mine, I got really late. Um, the yeah. card for two rounds, I had four separate picks where I was just like, I should take Oko if I were like a, a responsible player who was willing to change plans at this course. But I just <laughs> like, I cannot afford the green mana given that every fetch land win like round two. So, so yeah, it looked like, um, uh, somebody, uh, whoever that was there, Chad went with the plan that we had discussed for years, which was yes. take all the lands to mess people up yep, and then just play burnt. Yeah, totally. Very, very exciting to see that we got the, the the two blasts and and the beginning of the burn spells here after that fetch land run. Um, you mentioned the uh, you mentioned the Oko as something that you might have picked up if you if oh, you man. were feeling like a more responsible drafter. Um, yeah, after strip mine, I was like, okay, should I take strip mine or Oko? And then for the next two rounds, I was just like, I should take Oko, and then I just decided not to. <laughs> I don't well, know. I just like trying trying to fight people over green and uh, spoilers. I'm drafting Merfolk, so like trying to like it, it didn't make a lot of sense to go into green for Merfolk. I, I, you get two lords out of it, um, right. but the mana cost is so ridiculous. 
yeah, I think in Merfolk, staying in mono blue makes sense, and you're you're clearly trying to trying to do that, picking up cards like Dismember to 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 grab right. some extra effects while staying in a single color. Um, the chill pick. Tell me, tell me what what to, tell me about this chill pick here in round fourteen. So my, my list of cards I need right now is pretty low. Like, I, I don't have a ton of things. Basically, I'm drafting to the sideboard. Like, my next pick's probably going to be Graft Digger's Cage and Mystical Dispute. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm thinking about maybe doing Skull Clamp, uh, but, like, a Skull Clamp and Jitte. But, like, those are, and Vendillion Click, maybe. Like, these are all kind of, like, the cards that are floating around. But my main deck is pretty tight at this point. So these are all cards for sideboard because my main deck, nobody cares about taking my Coral Hall Commander, right? Like, that's just not a thing that's right. going to happen. So I, I can have a luxury of taking whatever cards I want. So I'm just kind of looking down pick lists of like which cards go when somebody draft mono red. I don't know how that affects other people's pick orders, but chill feels like a card that I want to have in that matchup. And we also have at least two other red people at the table. Like I know, for instance, Alex is going to be going into a welder deck uh, and Patrick is, has some red stuff going on. Um, somebody else, somebody else is also, uh, was complaining that their pyroblast got stolen. So I'm like, all right, there are three to four different red players at the table. Master of waves is going to be great, but I want to have chill Ooh. specifically for Chad's matchup. Master of waves. Can't wait to oh, see yeah, that. That's going to be probably main deck. Oh yeah. It might not. I, I didn't anticipate getting Narsa. I didn't anticipate getting Hulk Breacher. Like there's a bunch of cards I got that have kind of just like made my life really complicated. I'm not going to complain, but. I might not get to run Unified Will, which makes me very sad, because I already have, like, Spell Pierce, Force of Negation, Force of Will, Days. Like, I I could, at any point here, take Mental Missteps, Spell Snare. Um, like, there's a bunch of cards that I'm actually, like, had very high on my list with the anticipation that all the counters are going to go fast. Um, and it just hasn't really happened. So, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think some of the other craziness, including the land run, uh, left you and Darian and Alex yes. kind of in hog heaven. Like, you Absolutely. know... Um, it's kind of funny, actually. Uh, who is it? Uh, Eric is is drafting the exact deck that I was going to draft for my late and for the end of the draft. Like yeah. we have something like twenty cards overlapping, um, just from like, well, there's only fifteen taken, but we we basically every card is overlapping in the list that we had there, and the ones that he was complaining about were the same ones that I would have been complaining about in his seat. <laughs> yeah, it's like somebody else drafted my second half deck. I got very lucky by getting first uh, se second pick in seat order, but actually first pick in the first seat. If you scroll over to the right, you can see the the order that the seats were drafted in it is wild. Like first pick took eighth, and then third pick took seventh. There's just like a lot of weird stuff that happened there. Yeah, people people yeah. really wanted to to live close to the wheel. I guess that was the yeah that was the the big motivation for some of these folks. And, so uh, what? Uh, talk to me about the Lutri pick. Like l knowing what you're playing, you're on Lutri feels off to me. Uh, I'm never boarding it in, right? It's just it's just hanging out there on the board. But like again, I, there's so many counter spells that I can take that I was not particularly worried about any of those going. So like the only cards I was really thinking that uh, I have to like make sure I get at some point are Aether Vial and True Name Nemesis. Um, the rest of them feel like they are relatively straightforward, uh, and I don't think anyone's gonna be fighting me for them. So Lut Lutri was just this is a card that somebody else could easily take at any point here. And there's no downside to me taking it early because, like, if I get days versus misstep, I'm equally happy. So there's not a lot of, like, the, the opportunity cost of taking other cards was just, like, it, it didn't really matter. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was something that you could just you could just sort of grab the loot tree and say, you know, I'll, I don't know, uh, I'll, I'll play loot tree and, uh, and copy something. Uh, maybe not even right maybe it's just a three mana like it's a six mana creature out of the board when things stall out like it, it's i think it's probably going to get played in like three matches or right. th like three matches probably like one to two games but, but the long matches where nothing's going on and i just need another body like lutri has not a lot of synergy but it's just a free card right like that one sideboard slot is just not worth that much that makes, makes sense. sense um we're <laughs> was there a discussion before the draft about uh about Chun Li and and the the Street Fighter secret lair. So yeah, Heidi did ask uh, if if Street Fighter was legal, uh, and I assumed she was going to go Blanca, but no, Chun Li apparently is the answer. Oh we'll see. my gosh, yeah, I I, uh, I don't know what's what the plan is with Chun Li, but I'm very excited to see <laughs> what. Uh... Oh, I don't know either, but that deck's the sweetest of all of them by far. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I was going to ask you which the the other decks you you would you would like to play and. I, I definitely agree that the the, the Heidi's deck with with the Chun Li is is absolutely the coolest 
the coolest possible deck in existence. Um, so how's totally. the spirits in the room? Are people uh, people having a good time? People are having a great time. It's it, it's really fun to just like see a bunch of friends hanging hanging out and playing. Uh, I think everybody is like a little nervous in the first couple of picks, and now it is just like. The, the roasting is happening. Um, Good. Alex's computer is, is is broken, so he's sitting downstairs right now. Oh. Um, just people are shouting at him and stuff. It's a great time. <laughs> yeah. so, so did Pete come in and say, "I'm just going to draft the exact same deck I drafted last time"? No, uh, yeah, I think actually learned a lot from last time. If you look at it, right, like because last time the big thing that hit Pete was number one lack of focus, uh, and okay. this time I think the discard uh, discard kind of strategy is is more clear. Uh, but the other thing was uh, was mana. Like Pete, Pete really got hurt by having no mana last time. So I think that that's where like prioritizing the three dual lands at the beginning uh, it is is showing a lot of learning from my from my perspective, right? Like he didn't. Yeah. He was just like, nope, I'm not going to get screwed out of this. He actually started the land run initially, yeah. Um, and then obviously Chad like kept it going. But uh, yeah, it, I, I think I think Pete is uh, is in a better spot this time and is playing around like splashing around less, which is a good thing. One of the coolest things about this format is you, if you have the mana to do what you're trying to do, uh, yeah, you have a shot. Totally. And I think Pete's. And that's that's I mean that's why I'm going to run 15 islands in my deck. Right? Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's the plan. Uh, I didn't expect to get wasteland. I don't know. Like I don't know what my colorless land count is. Uh, but with Mudavol, uh, I, I don't know if you main deck it. I was like, I don't even know if you main decks yeah. the wasteland. But. Yeah. I don't know either. Uh, I think the opportunity cost is pretty low. Looking at the like. Since I got Aether Vial, and since like I'll have, I, I think there's enough things that I don't need to necessarily guarantee I can hit the Lord of Atlantis in turn two, uh, but we'll see. I don't know. I, I, I'll need to look at it actually laid out first. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like what blue sideboard choices there are. So that's where it's like Mystical Dispute. Mm. I think Graph Digger's Cage is best. I need to like I need to read through which graveyard hate is important between that and like Tormod's Crypt. And um, there's even that like new vehicle that kind of sucks. But I, I I'm I'm like. You're really thinking about it. Uh, what is it called? Something hearse. Unlicensed I don't know, that, hearse that, that, is the card you mean. Yeah, that's a card Hearth that all. like I don't think it's good enough, but like it does kind of do the thing. Um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about it. It definitely does something yeah. in, in a in a creature based deck. If you if you want to attack the hearse, certainly uh, it it certainly carries some weight if you're if you're swinging. So it's an interesting well, idea. The, uh, we have like a the Saga Academy round out of out of Alex there is uh that's a pretty pretty amazing wheel. So Gosh, yeah. yeah, I think they're taking Urza Lord High Artificer in my deck, and it, it has no synergy, but it's just like a very good blue card. Um, similarly, Jace the Mind Sculptor has not gone yet. That's one that I'm just like uh, I don't know. There's there's so many of these cards that are powerful but don't really fit with my thing. Um, that are hard to pass up. Similar like Vendillion Click, uh, whatever the other like uh flying Flash guy. I don't remember, but yeah, like there, there's a bunch of these like very good blue cards that, um. I could run, but then I'm not a Merfolk deck anymore, and there's a ton of synergy for that. So we'll see. That's the danger of, right. of formats like this, where you're getting these those sweet value drafts uh, later, where you think, "Oh, this is floated super late. I'll just take it," and then you're actually compromising exactly. your own plan. Well, and looking at my looking at my list, it's kind of like I'm, I'm running. Uh, I think I'm running 19 creature or 18 creatures. Mm -hmm. um, so given that, I just I have no flex slots left in the main deck. So trying to figure out like what what things are actually a high enough upgrade on the sideboard that I want to have drafted them, uh, or they're good enough to like knock something like Sig out of the de deck. I just don't know. Um, similarly, like I don't know how good Phantasmal Image is going to be. That's a card that I feel like I should take early, but I don't know against this field. Looking at it, it doesn't seem particularly useful, so I might actually bump that one. Mm. I don't know. There's, there's a bunch of choices here. Yeah, well, I'm excited to see what you draft. It looks like we're coming up on the end of this break here, if I'm not mistaken. Um... Is there anything else you yeah, want to, right. to share before we, before you uh, head back in? No, I mean, uh, Heidi Heidi was expressing again how appreciative she is of kind of us making this format happen. And uh, I want to say the same to you two. Like, obviously, commentating this is, uh, is like, not as much fun as playing, probably. But it's really cool to be able to have uh, to have this format happen and to have people be excited about it and be able to watch. So thanks, everybody in chat, for watching. And thanks to you two, especially, for, for hanging out with us. Please pass our thanks on to the drafters. They're giving us uh, quite the spectacle today, and, and we really appreciate it. Excellent. Well, see you all. Thanks, Mark. Later. All right, we should be back uh, back into the draft in just a few minutes. It looks like uh, <laughs> looks like Pete has has early picked City of Brass uh, right after Alex's Alex's pick of break. So <laughs> right. 
We'll see what happens with that. I doubt Alex will take City of Brass away from Pete here. Yeah, it seems unlikely. So if you're if you're Heidi and you're you're looking for more humans to go along with Rick, what else are we looking for here? What other humans are are exciting to you in the, the VRD world? I mean, if you want to go humans, you know, you've got like uh, you know Thalia's lieutenant. Um, you know, I'm interested in things like meddling mage. Um, you know, Thalia's lieutenant's the big one. I mean, the thing about humans is there's just so many of them. Yeah. I mean, there's just it's kind of the wor the world's your oyster. Um, I've never actually played the humans deck. Reflector mage, you know, Ooh, reflector uh, mage. I like that. That's a classic. That's been picked twice. I I forgot. Yeah, it's been picked it's a couple times. Yeah, good for reflector mage. Yeah, there there are a lot of good just util like low to the ground blue and white utility humans that just beat people up and stop them from doing what they're doing. And I'm sure Heidi's going to be looking for those to go along with uh with that Rick. Yeah. Rick, I need to take another look at Rick, actually. Yeah, what if, uh, yeah I'm pulling him up here myself. Not a Rick. As Rick enters the battlefield, choose two abilities from among First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink. Humans you control have each of the chosen abilities, and as long as you control oh, four or more humans, humans you control get plus two, plus two. All right, that's pretty good. I mean... Yeah. Giving everybody first strike and vigilance, giving everybody first strike and life link. I mean that that's hard to deal with. Yeah. It's just if if you're not playing against another creature deck, some of these abilities are a little bit irrelevant, right? But if you can actually assemble a table of four or more humans, you're gonna you're gonna go ahead and, and blast people real hard. Uh it looks like we are I'm being told we're getting back to picks here. So we're gonna so also for the uh uh, Josh, so like things like you know uh, Lavinia and Thalia, and, and those also stop the decks that are trying to do their super dumb things as well, right? Slow them down just enough. So, yeah, the the successful creature decks in this format have some way to disrupt their opponent. We've seen plenty of successful creature deck be that decks be they Eldrazi and Taxes, be they Goblins, uh, Elves has worked before. Um, the other option with something like Elves being, you know, you're just very fast. Uh, Sensei's Divining Top for Alex. My guess is that we might see him use a cost reducer to try to go infinite with that. Light up the stage for Chad. And Heidi picks up Scheming Fence. Ooh, that's a nice one. I mean, I mentioned Meddling Mage, so Scheming Fence is a new one. Uh, but since Fence is hot, because what Fence can do is if Darian plays his Time Vault poorly, right... Uh, and and doesn't play it and immediately win with it. Fence can steal the time vault, or Fence can shut down a soul ring. Uh, you know, so it can steal mana and speed you up. So this is kind of this is exactly the type of card I was talking about that you want to be doing with that humans deck. So I really like this Fence pick here. Yeah, if 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 a creature has power and toughness and stops your opponent from doing what they're trying to do, it doesn't need to be big. It just it just needs to be able to do those things. Dig through time, wheel of fortune, and Douthy Voidwalker for Patrick. I know you like Douthy Voidwalker. I'm big on Voidwalker, yeah. And he Patrick likes that because Patrick does not want that played against him. Oh no, he no, he does not. Uh Josh, unfortunately, uh, scheming fence, scheming fence cannot name cards that are not on the battlefield. You have to choose. You have to choose a permanent that that currently exists on the battlefield. Not, not quite the same as meddling mage, but but still quite good. Mystical dispute and mutavault coming out for Caterberg. Looks like he's going to save that Grafdigger's cage for later. And Patrick picks up a very flexible removal spell on anguished unmaking. Who's obviously winning so far? Well, uh, I mean. One of our players drafted Chun Li, so probably probably Heidi who drafted Chun Li. No worries, Josh. It's it's a new card. Just thought I'd let you know. Uh, we're we're all winning. No matter who wins, we win. Interesting to see this wheel of fortune out of Eric. I'm not sure what the plan is there. Maybe just 
dump my hand and draw more lands? Yeah, I mean... I think we'll see a mana bond out of Eric anytime soon. I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen how far he's going to go into the lands planned is kind of a question. I mean, mana bond, I don't pull up mana bond. I don't really think it's been drafted that often. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it in the St. Lotus era. Mana bond, three drafts. My guess is that those are very old drafts. Yeah. But we got some birds, para, paradise, paradiso. Yep. Two tickets to paradise. Uh, again, I need with. I don't think Archon of Mary is a human, but it's a very good hate bearer. So. Yeah, Archon of Mary, of course, an Archon, the classic creature type that everybody loves, but <laughs> definitely one of the premier hate bears. Absolutely one of my my favorite cards to disrupt opposing strategies. And Chad just staying the course with the burn. Yeah. You know he's he's. He's splashing the white for the pe the balance of the path. My guess is that we don't see many more creatures other than Ragavan. We may see a uh, an Eidolon later. We may see a... Uh, um, yeah, you're going to see Eidolon. I mean, yeah. I think if he goes too... I, I think going too much in on the spells is, you know, I think you want your Goblin Guides and your Eidolons mm -hmm. and your uh, robbers, the, Robber of the Riches and... Yeah, the only the only question there is the balance, but you're not going to have too many creatures at any given time, and neither is your opponent, and you're going to keep it low on the lands. I'm I'm excited. To, I think, I'm excited for a game where Chad fire blasts someone and then balances. I think Pete really would have liked uh, that dark ritual, like you know, dark ritual oh, hippie, dark yeah. ritual Red Rider Registrar. That's a classic interaction. Yeah, we've got we've got hypnotic specter here. Pete uh, Pete knows Pete knows what he wants. Lelia has not Lelia been taken not yet, been Josh. Taken yet. And Lelia is a fantastic card for the red decks. Let me pull that up real quick. So I would be I would not be surprised if Lelia goes undrafted here because mm -hmm. she's a commander only card. She's become very popular in the you know in the other VRDs, but if you're not paying attention to that, you may not be aware of her as she's a commander only card. Um, Maddening Hex, of so, course, the other commander-only card that fits well in the red decks that people might not know. Right. So that that's going to be the interesting thing about, you know, how deep the knowledge goes of some people that aren't, you know, may not be as in, pay, pay, pay as much attention. Uh, are they going to know, like, the Lele and the Maddening Hex and some of those cards that are all-stars in VRD? Um, Confluence definitely a possibility, yeah. Yeah, we could see Confluence four mana for six to your face as as sort of a base case scenario. Goblin Welder here, along with Foundry Inspector for Alex, just continuing to do artifact shenanigans. Alex may not have uh have may not have that uh, volcanic island, but he's certainly got ways to generate red mana with Mox Opal, and uh, certainly basic lands at this point. I just I just can't wait to see Chun Li. I mean. Okay, that's not true. I wish I could see Chun Li in action, but I won't because we're not streaming the games. No. We're just streaming the draft. Yeah. I'm very sad about that. Well, I hope somebody gets Chun Li out with. But the problem with the Chun Li pick, though, to me is that I like, I don't know what spells. I guess swords and it's just Geddon. Armageddon, right? Geddon is the play. I mean, so that's the issue with like Chun Li is that. It, it does pull in two different directions, you know. Yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's kind of a one card combo or t with uh, with Armageddon. <laughs> I can't wait, but I'll yeah. have to wait. Accurate. I'll be waiting forever. <laughs> oh. no. Pete's got something in mind. I'm trying to figure it out from Ma. What could that be? I'm just thinking about the long list of, of burn spells Chad can pick from here. He's got a lot of options. MA, I'm going to say he's going to take Maze of If. Ooh, is that is that on his list from last time? You doing a little research? Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> that, you're right. It's Maze of If. There and we I go. A nice, powerful card and uh, something he can take away from this lands deck coming down the line here. Chad picks up Vandal Blast to just sort of delete Alex. 
uh, whenever that's cast. Now, Verdant Catacombs probably would have been a good pick for Pete there. It, yeah, so we don't have the uh, one of the one of the pieces of technology we have in the the Discord drafts is the the fetch land monitoring uh, algorithm. Yes, that that highlights fetch land monitoring system. Yeah, highlights all of the the taken fetch lands. Um, so without that, I don't know how many fetch lands have been taken. But uh, Eric does. He picks up Bloodstained Mire, Godless Shrine for Patrick, who's already picked up the Scrubland here. Oath of Druids for Darian. Looking to uh, looking to to bring that Uro into play. Probably bring some other stuff into play. I would guess the Uro is not going to be the only. The only the only creature for the oath and Caterberg picks up energy flux as a sideboard card against Alex here. I don't like the oath with Ledger Shredder and Snapcaster. I, no, I don't like it at all. No, I think that's. Uh, Man, I guess if you're just I guess if you're just thinking everyone else has a lot of creatures, so I'm just going to be lighter and it's probably going to trigger anyway. It, it seems okay, but do you think that's a transformational sideboard plan for Darian potentially? He picks up the oath. He boards out the uh, the two mana creatures and and the Uro and just brings in like beaters. That's a possibility, yeah. Well, he's not Eric getting with Ever Biggie. He's not getting Evercool because Eric is now. Channel's still on the board, right? We haven't seen yep. Channel go yet. And Channel usually goes quite early if it is going. I mean, he's jumping the gun here with her Iona. She's like, well, Patrick's not going to reanimate that. Now, how are we casting Iona? What's the... I, I don't... What's the plan here? I don't know. Or was Darian taking Iona? Was that Darian typing the wrong... The wrong, uh... Yeah, I don't think so, though. Yeah. Definitely, definitely a possibility, Josh. When when Eric sees Darian take that oath of druids, he might have said, "You know what? I need to take my Emrakul now. I can take my channel later." Nobody else seems to want to to pay double green for channel here. Although, Pete well, might... Mark had said that Eric was on a similar that one of Mark's backups was an oath deck, and he said that Eric was on a similar plan. So that oath prop might have very, very much disrupted his plans. And Darian sees that Emrakul and says, I'll, I'll, I'll have the next best El Eldrazi option, please. Nope. Darian switches nope. at the last second. A swerve to Kozilek. And Heidi really is going to take this Iona. What is this for? I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I don't understand it. And that means. But I don't have to like it. It's not my deck. <laughs> And like most humans, what I don't understand, I don't like. That's not true. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it looks like Heidi's got some grand plan for this Iona here. Not sure what it is. But we'll find out. Doesn't involve Chun-Li. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense with Armageddon. Maybe, maybe there's a show and tell waiting in the wings here. Who knows? What do you think about... I, I I gotta say, when Darian switched from Uzum, Ulamog to Kozilek, I was a little I was a little confused. What do you think that's about? I don't know. I, I think Ulamog is the, the is the better of the of the two, but I guess Darian decided he wanted to draw some cards. Alright. You are you are our nope, hang on. No. You are our uh niche planeswalker aficionado here. Tell me about Chandra Dress to Kill. Yeah, but I'm also the I don't like red deck aficionado. So I don't know <laughs> much about that. All right, well I'll talk about Chandra Dress to Kill then. I don't I don't know what the plan is for Chandra Dress to Kill. I I understand she costs three. I'd rather take uh, Torch of Defiance. She's been discussed from the few people that discuss red decks. She 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 does pop up. She sees play in like the Pioneer red deck. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, it's kind of a a card draw. I mean, I guess it's just, uh, you know, I actually like the other three drop Chandra better right. because it allows you to catch cards from your graveyard, you know. Um, oh, Academy Manufacturer. Mm. A manufacturer. I love it. I don't know if it's good, but I love it. What is what is the plan for Academy Manufacturer, Pete? So far, Pete does not make clues. 
food, or treasures. And that's all the things the Caterpie manufacturer cares about. So something is clearly on its way. Alex picking up the two-card combo of Time Sieve and Thopter Assembly. Yeah. So Time Sieve lets you cash in five artifacts for an extra turn. And Thopter Assembly... Is really that good. Also, of course, works. Really good at generating five artifacts a turn. <laughs> you return it to your hand. You make five Thopters. You sack them to Time Sieve. You get another <laughs> turn. <laughs> Before that turn starts, you play Thopter Assembly. Repeat until dead. All righty. Oh. oh, bootlegger stash. <laughs> Well, we asked uh, what the uh, Playing with Academy manufacturer was. Now we know. Well, there's the next Chandra. All right. Well, St. Louis website does not know about Bootlegger Stash, so we tried. Yeah. So Bootlegger Stash is a million mana artifact. Uh, costs seven, but it turns every one of your lands where you can tap it and create a treasure. So a perfect card for... Uh... Perfect card to go with the Academy Academy Manufacturer. Patrick picks up Unmarked Grave uh, to pull that Archon of Cruelty into the graveyard. Yeah, uh, but not the not Grizzle Daddy. Does not grab the Grizzle Dad. Blight Steel for Darian uh, is another Tinker target. Sylvan Library for Eric, more value. Hope of Girapur for Heidi to shut down non creature combos. Katerberg just just doing what he said, picking up Vendillion click here. Yeah. Looks like we're beginning to ve <laughs> I, I I wonder just just as Josh no, Josh or Wondering Winder noted, uh saying I don't know how much room Heidi's gonna have in the main deck for, for humans, I don't know how much room Katerberg's gonna have in the main deck for Merfolk. Yeah, I know, I know. That's <laughs> We may just be seeing sort of another version of Mason's deck from VRD8 here, just a uh, a power a, a compact but powerful blue control deck. I like the Doom Whisperer. I I don't love it. Uh, I mean, it does let you fill your yard, but the fact is, it's it's kind of like you've got to reanimate it and then fill your yards with more stuff to reanimate. Yeah. So I mean, I think that's the issue with it. Is it kind of feels like. In this format, it, it's great in like standard or say, but in this format, it does. I don't know if it does enough. I yeah, I'd rather see cards I'd rather... like Elish Norn or the New Gen Gitaxius. Um, yeah, New Gen Gitaxius would be you know really good. Josh, my 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 guess is that Oath of Druids is going to come out of the sideboard. That's my that's my current guess is that we have a transformational sideboard plan from Darian, but we'll see. Yeah, click is click continues to not be a merfolk. <laughs> Hydroid crisis for Eric, very interesting. We're definitely looking for a channel here. Got some mommy. Yep, mom. Of course, a human. Fiery confluence. We talked about that card a little earlier. Yeah. So you got she grabbed stepmom earlier in round five or six, and now she's got mom to go with it. Giver of runes, of course, notably not a human. Giver is a core. Um, but yeah, Fiery Confluence can be a uh, souped up Lava Axe for one less. Can blow up some artifacts, a great great hedge card just, you know, clears the board, blows up your opponent, blows up artifacts, does what you need it to do. Um, and I'm seeing Wandering Winder in chat saying, I hope we see Revel and Riches and or Ginny Faye to combo with the Bootlegger's Stash. I really hope so too. There we go. I finally I finally put the apostrophe in the right place for bootlegger's stash. There it is. It's a lot of mana. Six mana is a lot. It's a lot of mana. Agreed. Fiery Fiery Confluence definitely seems sweet against this uh against this table. Yeah. It 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 messes with Heidi's plan, it messes with uh Alex's plan, Ken Max with Mark's plan. Um, we'll see. And and then 
Worst case scenario, six to the dome. And six is a lot. I guess everyone who picks Pete's, I just hold my breath. Just... Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I now that I'm very excited now that, that Pete is stepping a little bit further outside of what he drafted last time. Void mirror. Assuming some hate there for something. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no colored mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. So it can hurt Alex. Can hurt Alex. It could hurt Eric if he wants to channel into the Emrakul. Right. If that's his 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 game plan, Mind Slaver and Emery. So Alex looking for another uh, another way to lock opponents out. Pete picking. Alex up is looking to me like too many main deck cards at this point. Yeah. Like, so this is a. The, when, there's a lot when, going on there. There's tell, a lot of two card Montes. Tell me tell me more about about too many main deck cards. Is this something that that you see a lot in this format? Absolutely. So, I mean, what you'll notice, like, you know, if, even if you don't have a, a general plan when you are, uh, when you're approaching the format, there, it's so sexy. It's a sexy format. So there's this pool to grab amazing stuff. And you're like, oh, this is there. I can draft this. And, oh, I can do this with my deck. And then you get to the end and you're looking at, like, you've got 40 great cards but you've also got to build a 40 card deck with lands and you've got to cut it down to a draft pile of about 23, 24 cards, somewhere in there, 25, 26, you're greedy. Uh, and you end up with a situation where you've got so many different little combos and nice things that you are, you can't play them all. Right. So mm -hmm. you've got to make those hard decisions. And then when you move into the next get when you move into games two and three, you don't have things like your chills, your energy fluxes, your graft your cages, and those other cards that you really want to pull it out of your board, right? So uh, if you're going to go into this format, one of my suggestions is it's a little out of date, so you, it's not complete. But there is a color hoser web page that keeps track of up mm. to a certain point all of the major color hosers. And what I do is I always keep that open and keep it nearby where I can look through. It is on smileylitch.com. And I say, okay, well, I am in, um, I go to the top and I'm playing white, blue. So, okay, what color hosers do I have? All right, well, hose blue. Well, there's cir circle protection blue. There's Jace's defeat. There's mystical dispute. Oh, I want to hose red. I can run chill. I can run conversion. I can run ooh volcanic eruption. Right. Right. Yeah. No so one you know, this is is so powerful. Yeah. So that's where you get into good stuff like gloom, uh, your celestial purges. I mean, a lot of the stuff is easy to remember, but you know, like your hydro, like your red elemental blast and stuff like that. Uh, but you can get some pretty, pretty good deep cuts uh, that, you know, run through. So, like, one of my particular favorites that I think is uh, gets overlooked a lot is uh, Noxious Grasp. Uh, black and one instant destroy target creature or planeswalker that's green or white. You gain a life. Uh, yeah. Because it's creatures and it hits planeswalkers. I think it's it's really good. Um, we've got quite a few interesting picks while we've been talking about this. Mark picking up a uh, Jawari Disruption and Ponder, uh, going further into this just good blue cards world. See, Mar this, this is actually, uh, Mason, I'll, I'll get right that to that, right? But yeah. I'm going to say this is actually hell for Mark right now. Mark had a plan that he wanted to play, um, Merfolk. But Mark, but the way this draft is going with everyone else, there are so many good blue cards, and Mark likes good blue cards. So he can't overlook. He He's like, you know, I can't pass up a Ponder. I can't pass up a Vendillion Click. So I don't know if Mark's going to end up playing. I mean, he's got the vial. I'm assuming he's going to end up playing Merfolk, but he's going to be making so many hard choices because there's so many amazing blue cards that are not being drafted. And he doesn't know how to handle it. This is eating him alive. <laughs> I think he might be abandoning ship on Merfolk. I really do. He's got too many. He's starting to get to the point of too many main deck cards. He he's 
we're we're running out of of room to run the 18 creatures he's talking about right we're starting to yeah. we're starting to get away from that uh yeah 23rd round ponder is amazing Stitcher Supplier and Brutality for Patrick. More Enablers. We were talking about him needing that. Food Chain and Squee the Immortal for Eric. Great way to generate infinite mana here for creatures only, of course. Misdirection and Standstill for Darian. Darian, now this is interesting. Darian does not have the creature lands. I guess Standstill and Oath of Druids is a thing? I like, I like Tithe Taker from Heidi there, though. That card's uh, underrated. That, that's a good card. Uh, so lightning bolted, Mason. You asked about lands. I, I mean, I, I run too tight sometimes. I think it depends on your boxes. I run down to fourteen quite often. Uh, my most recent deck got really greedy and ran fourteen. And it was a mistake. I should have ran fifteen. Um, but I mean, I think it's your. I, I think it's like any other uh, draft format. You know, I mean, you're 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 going to run the fourteen to seventeen range. Uh, yep. Depends on. Your, your deck, uh, you know, you can definitely get a little tighter with it, with your mocks and your other things. Um, where do you end up? I don't know. I know I, feel, I get greedy. I feel I feel the 15 to 17 feeling, 18 occasionally, if you're, like, trying to do a lands thing or you have, like, some, some particular reason to, you've got a significant number of spell lands or tap lands. Um, but I think that people are very greedy. And they do that thing that people do in Commander, where they go, I've got all these cards I want to play, what can I cut? Well, I don't like basic lands, so I'm going to cut one of those, right? I'm just going to cut a land, those are yeah. boring. And I think that's what happens in in this format, where lands aren't exciting, lands aren't, aren't as sexy as the rest of this format, so I'm going to cut my lands, and, well, then I'm going to suffer. I don't think people play. Oh, and, you're, play, and you're playing for those god hands with, like, you know, Mox and Dark Rid and Simon Spirit Guide, you know? Right, and, yeah. Know. 17 lands is normal in uh, in your average limited format. This limited format is going to have better mana than a lot of your those curve formats. much smaller. Much lower curve. Your curve's much smaller in this limited format. 17 tends to be on the high end because of that. We have a lot of lower curves, better mana. The boxes really help. The other fast mana pieces. Alex picking up some more great artifacts just to fill things out. Soul Guide Lantern to fight Patrick ensnaring bridge to fight every creature deck some of these don't forget alex can leave some of these in his karn board mm -hmm. um yeah alex does so, not have to put you know, mind slaver in his main deck alex does not have to put ensnaring bridge in his main deck right but the problem with all the problem with some of that in this format some of those plans with the karn board is like most of the time you're just going to grab lettuce and, and and call it a day you yeah. know if, if you're thinking about grabbing something else, especially something like Mind Slaver that costs six, why not instead get Mycosynth Lattice and win the game? Now, if they have, I get the difference is, do they have a board, right? Yeah. I mean, do they have creatures that can attack? That, that's, that's the difference. Right. Certainly, if they have creatures that, that can attack and you, you need to, you need to Mind Slaver them, you need to Mind Slaver lock them to win. That's another option. Also, if that card's going to die, Lattice is no good. But right. there is such a thing as overdrafting your card board. Mm -hmm, for sure. That can certainly happen. Ooh. Venture Shaper Savant. That's a, a solid one. Sorry. Uh, uh, the me. Damnation before the Damnation before the um, Toxic Deluges. You know. Toxic Deluge is definitely a... Uh, Probably a better card most of the time. Deluge, of course, costing a little less. Giving minus X, minus X, getting around indestructible and things like that. Sometimes leaving your own board, right? Sometimes yeah. you're just wiping their wiping their little guys and leaving your guys. Right, if you have your Especially Turgrid. Especially when you're running a rod and star. Yeah. You have your Turgrid, you have your Reggie. You wipe out their board, you keep your stuff. That That, that tends to work pretty well. <sighs> yeah, I, I I feel for Mark. He's got he's got too much too much on his plate, too, yeah, many, too many sweet cards to take. I feel for, for Patrick, totally uncontested, can just take whatever he wants at this point. Aside from the couple of random things Pete has sniped. Alex can just take any artifact. 
Everybody's in their lane. Everybody found their lane and they're in it. I don't think we're going to see any uh, too many sweet snipes from other people except for some sideboard cards here. I... I know what most cards do. I forgot what this card did. Oh, this is that popper card that works with reality acid. Right. <laughs> I remember this card from standard popper, Talarian Sentinel. Let's you return stuff. He drafted reality acid last time. He did draft reality acid last time, and I'm sure that's the plan again here. Lava He's got a lane. He likes it. Elite spell. Ooh, elite spellbinder. Nice. Very good human there. Nexus of Fate for Darian. Yeah, Brazen Bar. He's still... I, I don't know if he's going to end up in Fish or not. I think no, he's going to dump the vial and just play blue good stuff. I think so, too. Eternal Surge honestly, for Eric goes with the food chain. Honestly, if I'm looking at his deck, do you know what I do at this point? What do you do? I pick Stoneforge Calder the next pick, dump the vial, and just go blue white. Yeah. I mean, here's here's what at some point does Mark take Time Twister here? Like he's got the the Hall Breacher, he's got the Narset. And the Narset. Just take Time Twister. Yeah. All right. Some wild stuff is starting to happen. Darian's last two picks are Nexus of Fate and Wilderness Reclamation. What is happening? <laughs> I'm, yeah, this is... Um, I'm spellbound. I love it. I love of Obstruction. Makes walkers cost one more, or walker abilities cost one yes. more? Yes. Yes, they cost a mana as well as their their loyalty cost. Burst lightning. So I mean, for he, Chad. he's going really low on creatures. So here. far, Chad, like I don't believe in these creatures. I'm going old school burn. Yeah, just just going to the face clone for Pete. Pete says, "I don't need your I don't need your fancy uh, your, your fancy, fancy clones. Your fancy clones. Your fancy spark uh, spark doubles." Your your stunt doubles, your Phyrexian Metamorphs. Forget all of those. Give me the classics. Give me clone. Alex picks You're up one of a shield and opposition agent. Wow. Opposition agent a beating against Chad and his seventy five fetch lands. <laughs> a beating against Chad and almost exclusively Chad. And there, by the way, there's still a Verdant Catacombs out, I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh, there is. Copy artifact for Pete. Pete says, I, I want one of your fancy artifacts, too. Give me one of those. I'm also sad we don't get to see the matches, Josh. But uh, it's just... I need to drink beer with Pete. It's just how... He, yeah, seriously. I want to I wanna, I wanna know more about Pete. Pete, Pete seems rad. I have, I, have an Im I have an image of Pete in my head. I interviewed Pete at, about his deck at the last uh, St. Lotus Presents before before I found out there was a cat in the building and I had to leave. And uh, Pete was pretty cool. I liked Pete. I mean, everybody was pretty cool. But I got more of a chance to talk that, to Pete than some of the other folks. Is that a share volley? What's shard, a share volley? It's shard volley. I if I'm not it. mistaken. Uh, the, yeah. the, lightning bolt, <laughs> the lightning bolt we have at home in Morning Tide. Yeah. I, I'm sure we'll see Fire Search Blast eventually. Don't worry. Search for Azkanda. <laughs> ah, yes. Disenchant to go with Dismember. We haven't had Dispel yet. Don't worry. Caterberg will take it. He can't pass up. The <laughs> Tainted! Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Tainted oh, Pact. We don't, we don't have a, we don't have a Thoracle deck today. No, not yet. They're... So Thoracle decks had been, like, you know, we talked about it being the most undrafted combo, but in the last couple times, it seemed to have picked back into its spot where it need, probably belongs, you know. Patrick picking up Skyclave Apparition before Heidi can. Do you, okay, if you're Mark, I, I know you want to go into the, the zone of, uh, 
of uh of, of stoneforge but you could also just pick up like thorical consult and just have that as your your backup your 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 backup win con i i don't know what mark's i i i just i i don't i no longer have confidence that mark is uh sticking with the merfolk plan <laughs> I think there's just too much in his lane and he can't resist it. Yeah, there's so much Thorical is Thorical a Merfolk. Yes. Oh no, nope. Steven Skydiver. Ooh. But, I mean, so that's still the Merfolk plan, but it's it, it, it's still just a value. It's also just a value guy. Like right, we scroll down that uh Oh yeah. It's like he's still, he's like, look, I'm still in the Merfolk, but it's all just a value one. Oh, there's oh, the there curse catcher. That, that okay. Probably... okay. We're, we're, we're sticking with it. We're sticking with the fish. Mesmeric orb. Oh, I don't no idea what's going on anymore. I guess he's just knowing himself to... Yeah, a little, little Mark, uh, Patrick says, I need more enablers. I've got Doom Whisperer, Unmarked Grave, and Tomb, Stitcher Supplier, Collective Brutality, and Dark Deal. But that's not enough. Give me Mesmeric Orb, folks. And, uh, I don't. Mesmeric Orb, Dothy Voidwalker seems to be mean. Ooh, that's interesting. That's actually a very interesting interaction. As is uh, Dark Deal, Dothy Voidwalker. Dark Deal, of course. Has Dark Deal been drafted? Yeah, one time. One time. Maybe by Patrick. Who knows? <laughs> Dark deal. Everyone's favorite wheel. Eric picking up demonic consultation here. We may see uh, Thorical or Labman on the way back. Mishra's factory for Darian to go with the standstill. <laughs> Dark Deal was not Patrick last time. Patrick was also in the two spot last. Time. Yes, he was. He was playing playing reanimator cards, but he seems to. I, 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 he's he's drafted a more focused reanimator deck this time. I'm very very excited about that. I think overall the 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 level of focus in the decks this time is much higher, and that's really awesome to see. Like. People should draft the strategies they want and have fun. I, I, I support that strongly, but people are doing a better job of drafting the strategies they want to draft. Factory, so there's one of the man lands for the standstill. Yep. Hero of Blade Hold for Heidi. That's a, a four mana That's human, human that makes, unfortunately for Rick, makes soldiers. Not human. Smash Smithereens, good. That's that's a solid, yep. solid uh, pick there. Dark Deal was drafted in Chicago when people were going for Mono McGrim Aggro. I love it. Rex Sage for Pete. Rexage. Looking to blow up some artifacts. See, I'm, 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 I like Rex Sage, but I'm upset because I wanted a third of the clone. I wanted like, copy enchantment. I wanted oh, you, to, like. You wanted Mirror Made here, right? I wanted. <laughs> I wanted the trifecta of the clone and a copy artifact into I, copy enchantment. Yeah, you actually you just want copy enchantment. You want the classics. Watery yeah. grave uh, yeah, and I mean, steam vents. Still Verdant Catacombs on the board, by the way. I just want to talk about how Watery Grave usually goes about ten rounds ago. You know? We had the land run earlier and then people kind of forgot about them. How long can Chad continue to float all these creatures? Literally forever. Literally as long as he wants. No one is taking them, and neither is he. He just picked up Flames of the Blood Hand because he hates life gain. I like the Lion Sash from Heidi, though. Lion Sash is great. Love love to see the, the, white, uh, the white scavenging ooze here. I, I'm going to fix Man of War. You can't stop. Thank you. Now we and gotta now, fix the progenitus. And now we have progentius. Darn it! <laughs> I tried. You're doing the Lord's work, Eric. Uh, Darian's got me. Darian's got it. 
Bless you, Darian. Thank you so much. Uh, that was going to tilt me forever. So, Darian picking up tower. Heidi cry. Heidi cries a bit over the tabernacle pick there. That's 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 yeah. that's a brutal beat on her. Yeah, Heidi's going to need some way to deal with that. Mark's, tab. Not, Mark's not too happy about it. But Mark's sitting on strip mine and wasteland, so he's not too upset. Mark can handle the tabernacle. Mark picks up Hercules recall as a fantastic sideboard option against Alex. Just says, "Hey, what if uh, what if you didn't have anything anymore? What if it was all back in your hand? Would that be good for you? Probably not." Yogmoth's will for Patrick. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about Yogmoth's will here. Yeah. I do like Progenitus for food chain, though. That's very good. Gonna be a lot of fun to see if uh, Progenitus gets down there. Yeah, Mark's got a lot of yeah, options had... for Merfolk. Don't Eric has the demonic tutor. Eric has the demonic tutor, right? That was his second, second pick. Eric has the DT. No. Yeah, okay. Yes. He yes. does. Oh, yes. Eric has the DT. I was looking at Patrick. Right. Well, I was thinking for the food chain to, you know, be, consistently be able to try to get your food chain up. Yeah. I guess Patrick has the dark ritual with the Yog will. Those are friends. If you need to try again. Mark tanking on his second uh, his second pick here on the wheel. Every, look at that. Look at that lineup of... Uh, of, of of colorful rectangles. Everyone's ready for their pick, and Mark picks up Ashiok Dream Render. Just some hate. That was on his list, right? That was on his list. Yep. Mark can definitely just draft 15 Merfolk here if he wants to. Yeah. And that's pretty much what's going to happen. Mm hmm. Another big reanimate target. Saris Emissary, another great reanimator card for Patrick. Modern Horizons 2, with a bounty of good cards for reanimator between Archon of Cruelty and Saris Emissary. And a line, solid three drop there. Yep. Crop rotation for Darian to go get the tab. Gemstone caverns for Eric. Luck counters Ahoy. What is the name of the We we are skewering some critics. We don't want, we don't like them critics. Adeline notably does create humans for uh. She for does Rick, yes, which is good. Scare the critics, yeah, more just more cheap burn. Goes right. You know, Iona may have just been, Iona may have just been a hate pick against the reanimator, being she's like, I'm heavy and white, I can't you know I can't beat Iona. I can't beat that. Pete has uh Pete Pete, you've already picked Solarian Sentinel. That was that was you five rounds ago. <laughs> I got a bathroom, I'll be right back. Cool. I in in Pete's defense, I've done that, and it looks like he was just looking to draft the other half of the combo here, Reality Acid. So of course, uh, Talarian Sentinel helps you return permanents you control to your hand. Reality Acid, uh, when it leaves the battlefield, the Enchanted Permanents Controller sacrifice it, just lets you blow stuff up in mono blue. It's great. Phyrexian Metamorph for Alex. Yeah, your mono white deck can path and plow a lot of reanimator targets, but not Iona. Yeah, I'm normally not into hate picking. I think it just makes your and their deck worse and therefore makes the other six decks better. But sometimes a card is so bad for you that you just need it gone. And I think this is one of the rare cases, one of the very rare cases where a hate pick makes sense to me. Altar of the Brood for Pete, Retrofitter Foundry for Alex, Chad picking up a foundry of his own, Sacred Foundry, fixing that mana to go with along with the uh, the plateau here. And Heidi picks up Charming Prince for a little more blink power. I know we saw Soul Herder earlier. Has anyone drafted Chill? Yes, Caterberg drafted Chill in round 14. Chill is out there. Uh, we haven't seen 
Circle of Protection Red or, or Core Firewalker or really any other anti-red hate cards, but I'm sure we will. Late Badlands for Eric. Does she have blink targets yet or are they coming later? My guess is that they're coming later because she doesn't really have a lot of blink Or she targets. just decides to cut it or she just doesn't run it, you know. Yeah. But she just picked up Charming Prince. That was that was my Okay, well that's a good blink card. Yeah. You know what has protection for red Master of Waves? Mark did talk about that earlier. We may yet see Master of Waves here. So I think I worry Patrick's ended up in the too many targets. Yeah. You know, we talked about the balance and the reanimator problem where you've got, you know, do you have enough enablers? Do you have enough targets? Do you have enough reanimate spells? And right now I feel like we're in the too many target land and he needs something like a pack rat. Strongly agree. One of the most powerful things you can do in, uh, in, uh, in a reanimator deck is have a plan B. Um, and Patrick so far, does not have a plan B. And plan B can be as simple as make big mana and cast by large creatures. It can be yeah. something else complex. It can be as simple as I have pack rat. Mark well, up. Harbinger of the Tide shows he is he is he is committed. You know, curse catchers even runnable outside of uh you know uh the Merfolk, but Harbinger shows I am I, I'm gonna do this thing, you know. All right, so it looks like we are going to be taking a Another 15-minute break here. Um, so we'll be back shortly with, with more dra more drafting. But, uh, yeah, let's do a... Uh, I was going to say, let's take a look at these decks. And uh, I, yeah. think, I think that's a great idea. So let's just go down the list and do a little recap of what we've got going on so far. And we can talk about, you know, how we feel, what we think is missing, what we think they'll pick up in the later rounds. All right. Let's go this is St. Lotus Presents, so this is not our the normal St. Lotus crew, but we are uh, presenting and loaning our, our 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 expertise and our hilarious commentary uh, and our platform yeah. uh, to this group of friends and judges uh, and geeks out in the the west suburbs of St. Louis somewhere. So, so yeah, we're gonna see we're if if you haven't seen the earlier parts of the draft, we've we've seen some some picks that you might not expect. Uh, people just picking the cards that they're excited about playing, not as in tune with what the some of the more the the more experienced VRD folks are in terms of like when things go, where things go. But nothing wrong with that. We've got people learning and having fun and and doing their thing, and and that's that's what we're about. If that's you know, that's that's how the format spreads. People have to try it. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at these decks. Let's start uh, on the left with Caterberg who started off with the Ancestral Recall in the one seat. Uh, often that's Black Lotus, but there's been a bit of a 50-50 there. And then Mark started to travel down into just blue card heaven here, picking up an Aether Vial, hinting toward a Merfolk turn, and then eventually hitting that Merfolk turn much later with cards like Harbinger of the Tides, Curse Catcher, and Thieving Skydiver. What do you think of Mark's draft so far? So... I would not have been able to do what Mark did, which is resist the Oko, which went much later than it should have. I would have, after those first couple picks, I would have grabbed, after the strip mine, instead of the Narset, I would have grabbed the Oko and said, screw it, screw my plan. I'm going into ridiculous blue-green good stuff with strip mine and Oko and uh, been uh, happy as a pig. So I, he, he's been, you know, he's been committed and that's good. I, I, I know he was tempted, but he... He's got a very, very good draft. He's got very good sideboard. He knew the stuff that he could do later on, uh, get, get his Merfolk later on, so he's able just to start grabbing sideboard cards. Uh, he's got a strong counterspell suite uh, that he did not expect to have, and yes. uh, it looks good. I feel very much the same way. If I'm Mark here, what I'm looking up to pick, what I'm looking to pick up after the break is uh, Merfolk, Merfolk, and more Merfolk. To fill out my creature base yeah. and beat down, I want some of those lords. I want some more of those utility merfolk cards like Tide Shaper. Uh, somebody else mentioned Rashad and Dock Hand earlier. I'd be interested in that as well as a, a potential way to help shut shut other people down, slow them down a little bit. Anything yeah. else you'd be looking for if you're Mark? Uh, no, I know those are on a short list. I know he was really excited. About it. I showed him Tide Shaper. He he had not he didn't know that card existed, and uh, so I, I expect to spread and seize. Yes. Uh, I expect to see in there. 
again, very disruptive, uh, you know, against mana bases and stuff. So let's move on to Patrick. Patrick started out in the two spot, picking up Mox Jet over the Black Lotus. Just knew what he wanted. Didn't want the, the Lotus. Wanted that, that permanent source of mana every turn. Quickly moved into Bazaar of Baghdad, signaling Reanimator. And of course, we saw some of the classics. We saw the, the reanimation spells, reanimate, animate dead, exhume, followed by some enablers in Tomb, and then later Stitcher's Supplier, Collector Brutality, Dark Deal, and Mesmeric Orb, along with some of the, the classic creatures of Reanimator, Gristlebrand, Archon of Cruelty, Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite, Doom Whisperer, a little bit less of a classic, and Sarah's Emissary, along with finally a Worm Coil Engine, which he seems to have stolen from Alex, our artifact player. What are your thoughts on this draft so far? I really liked his draft early on. I mean, reanimate. So reanimate is is a weird spot, right? I mean, some folks kind of think about reanimate as training wheels, um, but it seems to be picking back up lately. Uh, at least from what I see, some people seem to be growing back interest in it. I think there's a lot of ways you can go with reanimate. I like the blue black where you get something like ledger shredder now yep. to fill the yard. Uh, as I said earlier, I mean, reanimate has the balance issue. You've got three things you got to do. Do you have your enablers, you have your finishers, and you have your reanimate spells. And I'm not sure if their balance is right, because Reanimate also has the fourth thing, which we just mentioned, which is the plan B, the what am I gonna do when I don't get the big when I don't hit get the big juicy target. And I'm not, that's what I'm not seeing here is the pack rat plan. I mean, Dolphin Voidwalker beatdown can just get there, but I'm not seeing the pack rat plan. I'm not seeing uh the plan B. Uh so that's what I'd like to see out of this. Also, I'm not, I'm seeing I've just not seen a lot of answers. Uh, I mean brutality and skyclave. Uh, anguish on making they, these don't feel great to me right here for some reason so um I, I don't like the answer suite right now so yeah i don't think casting a double white spell is the answer for this deck uh especially in a, a list with uh with no no fetch lands we've got the scrub land we've got the godless shrine but cards like uh yeah anguished on making and, and sarah's emissary or uh, skyclave apparition are just not doing it for me here um i think we yeah. had a very good start if Patrick picks up a backup plan, I think Patrick will have a good deck. If Patrick doesn't pick up have a, a backup plan, I think he's going to have a tough deck. Uh, moving on to Eric's deck, this was something that we were very excited about because it was, was similar to a deck we were talking about yesterday. Also, it's rad. Uh, Eric started off with that Black Lotus, the beneficiary of Patrick's decision there. Uh, moved on down, grabbed some some classics, DT, Mana Crypt, Thoughtseize, and moved into Fast Bond. Uh, started up with some land synergies and then picked up Emrakul the Aeons tor Torn and took a quick swerve into Food Chain. Picked up Tainted Pact and Demonic Consultation as well. Has yet to really pay that off, in my opinion. And uh, then we picked up some more land. I, I like Eric's mana base. I think Eric would benefit the most from noticing the Verdant Catacombs has not been drafted yet. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, so I think that that would be a big benefit. It's on, on multiple colors for him. Um, I, I, I don't know about the consultation and pack. Like, that feels like it might be too much. But, I mean, I don't know. Are you just digging to, are you going to go with the Thoracle? Or are we going to go something else? This feels like it could have legs, especially against the rest of the table. I, I don't know if I like this most of the time, but I'm, I'm excited to see it. I, I don't I don't hate it at all, though. So... I think this food. Chain Other than deck I don't like the Death Shaman. I don't like the Death Shaman either, but I do think this food chain deck is in a good spot here at this table. I think it could very possibly just power out an early Emrakul or Progenitus and just win the game. Um, I don't <laughs> totally see where the lands theme interacts with that, uh, and not having balance or strip mine kind of makes me feel gnarly about the lands plan a little bit. We will see yeah. what Eric chooses to do with that. Moving on to Darian. Darian, our, our our serious value drafter here, starting off with Time Vault into Tinker into Time Walk, then into the world of counter spells, swerving a little bit for Crucible of Worlds, but then coming right back to the value drafting with cards like Ledger Shredder, Oko, Boseju, Dig Through Time, eventually picked up the key for Time Vault, and then a bit of a swerve into Oath of Druids uh, for Kozilek, Blightsteel, so take yeah. You take the Crucible out, and I love everything in the first 10 picks. Once you take the Crucible out. Like, everything down to Beseju, I love. Other than Crucible. Um, and I don't know what happens after that. Yeah. I, I don't... I don't... I don't really understand... I don't really understand the Crucible. I'm not sure what the Oath plan is. I think that should probably stay in the sideboard. Uh, I do like the Tabernacle pickup. 
I mean, the, the, the vault looks like just a value vault. Looks like we're not going to build around it too much. We're just going to, hey, if we get vault, we get vault. And that's yeah. okay. You know? If it happens, it happens. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know what we're going to tinker away, though. We have nothing to tinker away. Um, right. Heidi's deck looks like we're in humans. Uh, we've got Rick, Steadfast Leader, uh, holding up a bunch of powerful blue and white creatures, uh, some hateful creatures. We've got Chun-Li pairing with, uh, pairing with Armageddon. Uh, we've got a little bit of a blink sub theme, but I think we might be leaving that on the on the sidelines. And the Iona Shield of Amiria, probably a hate pick, just something she couldn't deal with out of Patrick's deck. Yeah, there it feels like a hate pick. Uh, the rest just feels like two directions, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I I would have loved to have seen the blink. I would have loved to have seen the humans or just the pure hate bears. And it feels like our toe is in the three, right? Like with the pure hate bears, you get like the Archon, you get right Redain. Um, so, I, I, I would have liked to see the focus up onto one of those three, um, but I, there's definitely a lot of cards that are really strong. I love the Scheming Fence pick. I love the Elite Spellbinder. I love the Tithe Taker. A um, lot of stuff I like there. I just feel like we have three lanes, and we need to figure out which one we're in. Stoneforge Mystic is still out there if Heidi wants to grab that and go that route as well. Uh, Chad yeah. up next. Uh, he's he's done what we've all dreamed of, taking the Mox Ruby, the Ragavan, and then a bunch of lands, and then all the burn in the world. Yeah, That's I, pretty much it. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, I I still think the I think this is a mistake in that the red creatures are too good right now. Uh, Layla, the robber of the rich, um, but you know it is not uh, to mention Goblin Guide and Monastery right? Swift Spear. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, I uh, it, it, if he wants to do this, I think that the other three drop Chandra, which lets you buy back spells, uh, needs to be on the table. Um, yep. So it lets you buy back some of these cheap burn spells. Uh, but we will, you know, we're going to throw some bolts, we're going to throw some stuff at heads, and we're going to see how it sticks. Uh, Steven, of course, recurrent, referring to Chandra Acolyte of Flame here. Uh, second to last, we have Pete. Pete starting off with a really strong base, Mox Emerald, Underground Seed, Trap, Bayou, Liliana. And then going in the peat direction, drafting the peat deck, the classic peat deck, just like last time, Riding Registrar, Ashiok, Nightmare Weaver, Glimpse the Undinkable, Turgrid, and then moving into the Academy Manufacturer Bootlegger stash combo before moving back into the peat deck, picking up Talarian Sentinel, Reality Acid, as well as Altar of the Brood. Pete? I didn't is- see Altar. Oh, man. Alter and uh, Academy Effect, or Ultimate Ga- Academy Effect, or Bootlegger Stash is hilarious. I mean, that's an expensive combo, but uh... oh yeah, Alter of the Brood for those not not in the know. Would, it's a, uh, uh, whenever another opponent card. enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So yeah, Academy Manufacturer, Bootlegger Stash, Alter of the Brood. I'm gonna tap one of my lands. You're gonna mill three cards. Wow. I hope Pete gets to do that. Like, this this whole deck, I yeah. look at this deck and I say, I hope Pete gets to do that. Because this is, this is rad. It's not a, I would not say it is a, a cohesive game plan, but it is what Pete wants to do, and I respect that. Pete's not here for a long time, Pete's here for a good time. Hell yeah. Finally, we have Alex's deck, Alex... Alex starting off with Soul Ring, Mox Pearl, Mana Vault, and just going deep on artifacts. Karn with the Karn board. We haven't seen Mycosynth Lattice yet, but we've seen cards like Ensnaring Bridge and potentially Mind Slaver. We've got the Urza. We've got some some great lands in Ancient Tomb and Mishra's Workshop. Uh, and then we've got some artifact combos like Time Sift, Thopter Assembly, Mind Slaver, Emery, uh, and Winter Orb as a lock so- piece. So I'm assuming the pearl is just because just to have a value pearl. I'm yes. assuming we're not going to see any white cards. Um, but we do have black, red, and blue outside of that. So, and that's where we get the um, lands later on. Ray took down there near the bottom, right? Yes. The watery grave, the steam vents, just dipping a little bit into yeah. these 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 colors here. <laughs> Alex knows he doesn't need the premier. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited duels. He can just grab these Ravnica duels and, and, and do his thing there. Yeah, we got duels at home. It's all right. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, yeah, so we're in a good spot. Now, this is interesting because, like, he's really the only heavy artifact deck this time. Normally, there's about two artifact decks competing. 
And he's really the only one, but that also means that those hate cards are an interesting spot because one, they, they either become ridiculous bullets against him or two, they become far less valuable, you know, but uh, Mark does have, you know, so the hatred against him out there, we do see the, uh, uh, Vandal Blast, we saw the Aether Flux, we saw the Hercules Recall. Yep, Chad uh, has the, the Energy uh, the Flux, the Hercules Recall. And the, uh, the Fiery Confluence as well. Yeah. But, I mean, just to complete wipe your board ones, you know, we don't have a Collector Oof yet. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, his deck looks very solid. I would say it is the, um, you know, in the top two decks right now on yeah. the table. I would expect to see somebody pick up Null Rod. I would expect to see maybe Darian pick up the Oof. But we'll see. Ooh, it looks like uh, Mark is flirting with a pick here. And Mark, where our break is over, Mark's picking up Gilded Drake. Ooh. Is he bu- that was not on his list. Is he balking out? <laughs> are we are we hopping out of Merfolk after that Harbinger of the Tides? What are we? Are, is this just is this just a sideboard card against Patrick? Do you think? I mean, that's a possibility. Yeah, or Darian, or or Eric. I mean, there are or Eric. I mean, Patrick or Eric. It's it's pretty good against Eric's targets are a little a little harder. Uh, Bitter Blossom for Patrick. Okay, all right. So we've talked about Bitter Blossom as part of a uh, part of a backup plan yeah. for for. for we took that last time too. It didn't reanimate plan, so that makes sense there. That gives them that backup thing. Um, probably needs a skull clamp, you know, get, you know, to go with it. Get a little draw action. Eric picks Gorio's, up Gorio's vengeance. vengeance. That's a way to reanimate your Emmer Cool. So, of course, Gorio's Vengeance having the key type of instant here, allowing you to grab something like Emrakul out of your graveyard or before it disappears. Now, Wilderness Wreck is pretty funny. Progenitus, unfortunately, a a replacement effect, not a trigger. So, no getting Progenitus. Some Shark Typhoon. All right, we got some Resto, so a little more Blinky. Yep, Resto. Burning Wish for Chad. Burning Wish. Now, why? I wonder. In the format, this allows him to get any sideboard card, right? Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know. I, I... What's the? I mean, I guess he can get his Vandal Blast, his Smash to Smithereens. There's the lettuce. Yep. Microsoft lettuce has been installed by Alex. Pete picking up Blue Elemental Blast. I think that's a. I think Blue Elemental Blast that's is good a great pickup. Pick yeah, that's my fa- that's my favorite pick from Pete Noir. Mark's Mark's going to be a little annoyed, maybe. Especially uh, if he's he got, feels... Mark's got drops a lot of Merfolk. If we that's true. Scrap trawler for Alex. Yeah, I guess Mark 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 needs to draft a lot of Merfolk at this point. He's he's gotta be committed to the, the Merfolk. He took the Harbinger of the Tides. And Pete does wheel oh, the hydro. hydro. Look at that. He says He just says, you know what, Chad? I don't like you. D- Pete 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 left and and Pete left and Pete too Repeat. came back. Repeat. Repeat got in the boat, man. <laughs> Repeat's here. And uh, he's here to draft focused hate cards. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Split. The split personality is Led Tasso. <laughs> Led Tasso. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I guess Chad could grab, like, Fiery Confluence, Vandal Blast out of the sideboard. Blab and Hydra Blast, fantastic picks here. Uh, Chad sticking with the Blast theme, picking up Fire Blast, and Heidi, Heidi, comma, Universes Beyond. <laughs> the Queen of Universes Beyond, I love it. Uh, what, is, what does that one do? Glenn, uh, like Glenn blue, is, right? the, uh, is the Ophidian. Okay, he's, okay. Uh, he's the, the, the Skulk. Oh. Yeah, one blue, white, one three Skulk. Whenever Glenn deals combat damage to a player, draw cards equal to Glenn's power. 
Skulk is a forgotten keyword. <laughs> yeah. Skulk, Skulk is fantastic. Can't be blocked by creatures with a greater power. So Glenn's, Glenn is not getting, Glenn's not trading off. Glenn's not getting blocked to death. Okay, oh. so for the second time today, and I, 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 I've done this before myself, so, so no, no shade here, but for the second time today, we do have a player uh, counterpicking themselves, taking a card they've already taken. Oh, no. Oh, no. Eric Eric had taken Bloodstained Mire uh, earlier uh, and, and had accidentally overwritten their own pick. Okay. Growth Spiral for Darian. Stinkweed Imp for Patrick. Dredger, right? Mm-hmm. Dredge 5. You're good. Not you don't sure. have to be this way. You don't. Not, normal. Not sure I agree with that one. Gutshot and Thada Adele for Mark. So Mark picking up Gutshot as just this free spell can can knock off an X one, can kill an opponent at one, can win a combat. Makes people think about math. Yup. It's a card people have to play around. But I want to talk about Thada Adele Acquisitor. This is a merfolk that hates on artifact decks. It is, it is. And it's one that, like, you know, you can see 40 out of 65, uh, round 21, so she's either really good or or feels kind of weird. I don't know. I've I've had her once, and I w- did not have much luck with her, but, like, it's definitely a, a potent, powerful card. Uh, I guess One of the problems, of course, is they can see it coming. But with yeah. the vial, if you can vial it out at the end of turn, that's the, that's the power, right? Yeah. And once you've got Tide Shaper or Spreading Seas going, they're not blocking Thought of Adele. Imp's Mischief for Patrick. Commander All-Star. He likes that one. He took that one last time, too. He must play it in Commander. That's my guess. Yeah. Not very popular, yeah. but uh, very cool card. A great way to counter a counter spell in black. Uh, you change the target of their counter spell to Imp's Mischief. Because, of course, you can't change the counter spell's target to itself. That's not legal. I do like the Denic P- Pious Apprentice pick. Yeah, now... Now you might mistake Dennis, Denik for Universes Beyond card, but no, Denik is a is is a is a uh, an Innistrad, one of the new Innistrad cards. Yeah. I thought maybe I could just get away with Denik. typing Denik, but no. He's been drafted at least once. I think Cody took him in one of his spirit decks. I think. This one does graveyard hate, right? Yeah. Oh, th- this bot is weird with with uh, double faced cards. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, it does not like double faced cards. So Dinic. Um, Dinic's a white and blue for a two three life link. Cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. Oh, I got it. I got there. Look at that. Yeah. And then when you disturb him and comes back, he becomes a 3-2 flyer that whenever one or more creature cards are put in a graveyard from anywhere, you get to investigate. But it only triggers once a turn. So this is some anti-reanimator hate coming out for Heidi. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very, very solid human pick here. Um, It plays into the strategy well. Already has lifelink. Has nice re- anti reanimator, um, really really solid pick here. Yep. Also stops the Gorio's Vengeance plan, right? Yeah, great pickup against the Gorio's Vengeance as well. Uh, I would like to see a uh, Dranith Magistrate at some point out of Heidi here. Uh, yeah. Sea Drake. What? What? Sea Drake. His his tickets are very expensive. C Drake, three mana four three flyer. Now this is a uh, this is an old school <laughs> blue beatdown card from Legacy. Yeah, reprinted in Modern Horizons. So, wow. As long as Spine stays in the Karn board, I don't hate it. Yeah. Uh, huh. Now he's not in the white, so I don't know if I like the dam or not. But I like dam, but. Uh, yeah, Without Pete, the white, it seems. Pete, Pete making an interesting good. trip into the uh, Sophie B. Hawkins catalog for this one. Damn, awesome, awesome, awesome. I wish Eric, I had white why, mana. That's why I wish you were my lover, buddy. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Incinerate it's, for Chad. Not just... many people. It makes the Sophie B. Hawkins deep cut. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now. Heidi. Tomic. Ty- pull that maybe up. Yes. Heidi's, this is a card I have been all about against a couple of um, Brandon's decks. I've not got to draft it yet, but like against like Nissa who shakes the world, mm-hmm. or against a couple of Brandon's decks like Tomic. That this is a spicy card. Tomic is a card that I regret not taking in VRD seven. So I love to see it here. I'm glad it's on the battlefield. Well, on the spreadsheet yeah. field. Yeah, yeah a couple of these pit last picks for Heidi, I like a lot. Moments piece from nice. Darren, so looking for a little reprieve from the creature deck, so that that won't help him against Chad. Gaia's Revenge is another, is an uncounterable. <laughs> Let's pull up Gaia's Revenge. You're about to bust that one out too, Common, the, the Atomic? Yeah, there was a couple of these. Uh-oh. We lost He's... Steven. Oh, there he is. <laughs> we briefly lost Steven, so we'll be seeing a... Uh... Oh, here we go. He's coming back. Yeah, my, dis- my Discord keeps randomly rebooting. Oh, you know. Normal stuff. Yeah. Uh, Mark picking up Master of Waves here, as we foretold earlier, and Lord of Atlantis starting into on that Lord uh, that Lord grind here. Um, we, yeah. We'll probably see Master of the Pearl Trident, maybe Coral Helm Commander. A chroma, yeah. Too too many cooks. Too, too many cooks. Too many targets. Primordial Sage. Tangle. Yeah, so Darian going deep on yep. some fogs here. I guess okay. I see what we're doing. Darian's playing Turbo Fog. He's got Nexus of Fate, he's got Wilderness Reclamation, he's got counter spells, and he's got fogs. Now and a shark type. Yes. I don't know about Turbo Fog in a format where a lot of people are not going to be winning necessarily by attacking. But okay. we'll see. Chad with the Burning Wish and the Wish is throwing me for some loops. What shenanigans is he thinking about? Chad's got a plan. Don't know what it is. He's got, no, that, I mean, that's obviously a plan, right? Like you're not double wish like you're not double wishing without a plan. No. Heidi picking up Ranger Captain of Eos. Let's see what Heidi has for that. Grabs her Esper Sentinel. Grabs Esper Sentinel, Mother of Runes, Giver of Runes. Yeah. It grabs those three. That's End all you of need. List. Right. That's all you need, though. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Wait. Hang on. Are Pete and Chad trying to spell out that Sophie B. Hawkins song? We have Damn and Wish. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I wish I was your lover. It's 1989 again. What are we going to do? That's actually probably 92. Damn, I wish I had a sideboard. Gala Greeters for Pete. That, of course, coming out of Streets of New Capenna here. I think is uh, Gala Greeters are second Streets of New Capenna card in this draft after Ledger's Letter. Led- Yes, Ledger Sledder. I'm sticking to it. 92. I was right. 92. Okay. 92. <laughs> nice. I would not. I, I would. I would have guessed. I would have guessed 89 as well. I would have been wrong. His personal is a human. I always forget that. Like, uh, he is a human soldier. That's so. Weird. It is a human soldier. It it does not look it. It looks like it's an artifact creature, human soldier. So very good catch there, Wandering. Alex picking up Wish Slot, so, Wish Slot Talisman and Moon Silver so, Key. Esper Sentinel with Rick's pretty sick then, actually. Yes. Ooh. Because the power goes up and then that value of X yeah. goes up. Mm. Yeah. So Moon, Moon Silver, Silver Key is one I've talked about. Yeah. It, it's it's very popular in command in commander and high end commander decks. It's not been drafted here yet. I don't know if it's good enough, but uh, you know, it's interesting to see. He's got a lot of mana rocks, so. Goes and gets the uh, the monolith. If Alex wants to right. do some uh, some Zerda, sh- well, not Zerda. He doesn't have art- enough activated abilities, but some um, power Crack, artifacts. It goes and gets Crack Clan Ironworks, doesn't it? It does get KCI. Oh no! I mean, that's, I think that's what people are forgetting about that card. Is it gets KCI? That's wonderful. Oh, I like that. <laughs> 
I want that to happen. Why can't we see these games? Ah! <laughs> Ad allergies and a lack of commitment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <And> COVID. <laughs> yep, that, all those reasons are the reasons we can't see the games today. So I like Gallagher Eaters. Uh, I don't know if it's right what he wants to be doing, but I do like the card. Yeah, it's a great card. I think it's got a, a place. I just don't know what that place is yet. Um... <laughs> I remember remember four or five picks ago when we had Blue Elemental Blast and Hydro Blast. Re repeat left, like t <laughs> Led Tasso left, man. Like like Ted Lasso's back. Led Tasso's out the door. <laughs> Pete's Pete's back on on his Pete uh, his his Pete plan, and uh, yeah. Pete came in, hit repeat over the head, and said, "Nope, see Drake." Okay, Pete can't make red mana. Let's let's. Let's let's all just just for no, a Pete's second. Got Pete's, Pete's got treasures. Pete's got treasures. Pete's got bootlegger stash. For bootlegger stash. Bane fire out of Chad. Interesting. Wants that uncounterable X spell if he pumps enough mana into it. Deputy of acquittals from Heidi. Is that, is that the, uh, That's the kind the, of O ring one? Yeah, the detentions. Oh wait, no. No, no, that's not Elrond. No. The deputy of acquittals is a human that lets you return a human to another an opponent's hand to, to your uh, another creature you control to your hand. Yeah, we talked about stash and package earlier, or we talked about stash and uh, manufacture earlier. But yeah, stash and package is indeed a combo. Tap two lands, get a human token. Long term plans for Darian. I guess he wants to search up that nexus of very things. late veil of summer. Yes, very, very late, late veil. veil. Patrick. Oh, Dark Confidant. Oh, no, Patrick. Patrick, don't. buddy, oh. I don't know about this. Dark Confidant, you are going to dome yourself for You're going to die, Patrick. You're going to die. Caterberg picking up Sig River Cutthroat and Spreading Seas, committing to the Merfolk. Sig, let's let's take a look at Sig River Cutthroat. River Cutthroat's a good boy. A good boy. I like Sig River Cutthroat. Oh, Patrick... Patrick's gonna find out. Patrick's Patrick's gonna bob around and find out. That's too yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all have to. We have to learn sometime. Show and tell for Eric makes sense. Exploration for Darian makes sense. Mist Meta Witch. Which let's just keep typing in the cards Heidi picks. I mean, that's, I, a, that's a that's a that, that is a shot. casual commander staple. Oh, I love yeah. some Mist Meta Witch. Pay four mana. Now, Miss Meta Witch is a flicker, not yep. a not not a blink. It comes back at the end of turn, so yes. you can uh, like uh... fragmentize for Chad and Merc Tide Regent for Pete. Merc Tide. It's a great card for all of Pete's instants and sorceries. Sorceries. He's got Fatal Push. He's got Worldly Tutor. He's got Diabolic Edict. He's got Glimpse the Unthinkable. Okay, I'm starting to understand this more. I'm not. But it's okay. You gotta, you gotta to learn to deck. think like Pete. You gotta learn to think like Pete. He's got Dam. Alex, I love this. Coveted Jewel? Coveted Jewel. This is a card that I play in my Zyrus Commander deck. To give oh, yeah. my opponents did we, cards. A, did we get a Jund Panorama instead of a Triome? We got a Jund Panorama. Because Pete liked Jund Panorama. I can't explain it any Price more than that. Price progress, fine, fine. Hall of Fountain. We still have Verdant Catacombs out, by the way. Yep. Verdant Catacombs is going to go on and drafted. Silent clearing for Patrick. Yeah, we will, we will not see Verdant Catacombs today. I'm almost 100% sure. Unless Caterberg is like, pick 46, Verdant Catacombs. <laughs> but we, don't, we, we do not have the, the Magical Fetch Land tracker, so that's probably part of it. Tide Shaper and Tide Binder. Mage. Tide Binder Mage locking down a red or green creature until Tide yeah. Binder Mage leaves. Great card. Yeah, windswept too, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. 
Zeator's proving ground getting pasted in. There we go. So we, at least we've got a, uh, you know, we do have a, a triome here. Yep. Now Pete's going to smack himself and go, oh, yeah, those things. I took Jun right. Panorama. <laughs> well, Jun, Jun Panorama, unfortunately, will not be getting Pete's non-basic land. Does not do what he may hope it does. Deprive for Darien no, Verd returning. Verdant uh, Catacomb would have. Yeah, Verdant Catacomb would. What is Deprive? Uh, deprive is the counter spell that you return a land to your hand as an additional cost. I believe. Okay. Uh, yes. So Darian can use okay. that to reset his glacial chasm. Right, right. That's some interesting plans. There. Or pull back his tabernacle should he want to. Some to big Teferi, Hero Dominaria. Big Teferi for highly interesting. It's a lot of mana for, for, for this deck to be spending. Yeah. I like Chad's price of progress. Chad having taken all those fetch lands and just a couple of duels to to sort that out. So so Chad will take two from price of progress, and Chad's opponents will take ninety four sometimes. Price of progress not quite as good in this format as it is in some of the other eternal formats, just because again you have that inconsistent access to to non basics. I, Same, but problem. still sometimes you just they get to start. It's like you know. Uh... Cody beats Swifty with some back to basics, because you know, a couple games where it's just like, you know, sometimes it just gets there. Savvy viewers will have noticed that while you were saying that, very briefly, Eric accidentally hit enter and Verdant Catacombs showed up in his column. So he knows. He saw it. He let's, knows. Let's He's going to have the most else. value Verdant Catacombs in the history of Verdant Catacombs. Pulse of the Forge for Chad has never been drafted. Uh, but if your opponent has more life than you, you get to pulse them a bunch. Pete drafting a cry I, of I the don't cry. I think that's the... I that's don't mind cry. Minus two, minus two, right? Yeah, and that's something else. Uh, what a, a little tack on to it. We, maybe, maybe we're wishing for Pulse of the Forge. We can't get it with Burning Wish, but we can get it with Wish Wish. Were of Invention and Icker Wellspring. Some pretty standard stuff for Alex here. Alex just... Alex Alex looking down his list of cards and being like, well, I got all the things I thought I wouldn't be able to just get for free. Now I guess I can get all of this other stuff. Um, maybe slightly forgetting to draft a sideboard, but that's okay. He'll figure it out. Blood Moon? Blood Moon for Pete. Browbeat for Chad? Classic Browbeat. Has browbeat? I mean, there was a much better browbeat at home. Yes. <laughs> is it just called? Is its name Goblin Guide? <laughs> yeah, well, that too. Yes, but uh, I'm talking about the one with uh, that you risk, can pitch a card and replay. Risk factor. Yeah, yeah a, a better card. Oh, uh, um, there's the Verdant Catacombs. Vryn Wingmare, Spellburst, Verdant Catacombs, Phyrexian Tower for Patrick. Not That's sure what fine. Phyrexian Tower is for. I guess it works with the Bitter Blossom. Rashad and Dockhand and Svalen. Let them reuse a Skyclave Apparition, maybe, I guess. Sure. Can you scroll down? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm cut off on the... We're down to the last five. Six. Five or six here. All right. Very Svalen, close to the so end. Some Unmask. I like the Unmask pick there. Nope. Sorry. Stomping Grounds has been picked, Eric. Or, what wait, is Spellburst? No, it hasn't. Spellburst. Spellburst is the buyback uh, uh, right. spell blast. <laughs> right. Mystic Sanctuary, I like that. Dauntless Bodyguard. Dauntless right Bodyguard. Here. There's another uh, another one drop for... Mm -hmm. Both a one drop and a human. Both Chad a still one. with one creature. Yeah, yes, that's one correct. Creature. Yes, that's correct. Ooh, Vexing Devil. Yeah, Chad. Chad's still on the yeah, one creature Chad's plan, looking to blank everybody else's removal. Huh? 
when when are we gonna get uh fire blast i can hear myself out of your out of your speakers Hmm. not sure why archive trap fire blast was round 32 okay great Yeah, Pete's sticking with the mill plan from earlier. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. Chain of Vapor bounces a reanimate target. Something that uh, Alex might consider in that spot as well is uh, Curfew. Is that the world's latest Lotus Petal? That is the world's latest Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal usually round 11, but but uh, Alex realized nobody cares. Nobody cares about yeah. this. <clears throat> Karth the Lion? He doesn't have any walkers. He, he's got one. He's got Ashiok. And that's it. Yes, he's got Ashiok and no one. Nothing. I mean, Boros Charm's a good pick. I don't even know what Hopeful Initiate does. Oh, he's got Liliana too, right. Yeah, okay. Takes a Blooming Onion over here. Hopeful Initiate uh, has training. That card's good, actually. I like that yeah, card. I like Hopeful Initiate. Sam walked so Mark could run. Yes, 100%. Uh, Sam did did try this Merfolk deck uh, in a Discord draft a while back, and uh, Mark is is iterating on it well. As a as a fellow iterator, I really appreciate that. I am I am not normally a deep brewer. I am someone who takes an existing list and says, "How can I make this better?" And I do it. Whoever's name is in yellow, I cannot read that at all on my screen. <laughs> That's Brandon. Okay. Our 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 good friend Brandon. VRD7 champion. Grumble Grumble. Brandon Curry. <laughs> what wonderful. Pete is drafting the Pete deck. Pete's drafting the Pete deck. That's, you know. In the same way. That Brandon is going to draft a Brandon deck. Pete's going to draft a Pete deck. That's just that's just what happens. Uh, you know, Tide goes in, Tide goes Pete. out. Pete drafts a Pete deck. Notice also the brood though. There is crossover. There is a crossover. That's the that's their that's their secret society's marker, right? There's a the VRD Illuminati out there. Patrick grabs Torok Dread Cantor. Really good with the uh, earlier Luris Torok. Love, love the Torok. Love the Torok with the Luris. Yeah, Master of the Pearl Trident Coral Helm Commander. Those lords are finally coming down. I love it when people draft like the the main cards of their deck in picks thirty through forty five. <laughs> That's a strategy I strongly endorse, and that's what Mark's doing. Eric picking up some more fast lands with Copper Lion Gorge here. And Blood Land looks pretty good against Eric. I mean, that's, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric's not ready for Blood Moon. He's got, well, he's got Nature's Claim. Right. Student of Warfare, a little level up one drop there. Another human. No less. Sunbaked Canyon for Chad. Chad just burn spells. Pete picking up Virus Beetle. Of course, that's the the robot version of Ravenous Rats. Oh, that's right. Okay. I was like, what is this card? <laughs> that's funny because Pete like, had Ravenous Rats last time. So he is yeah. a, a fan of the uh, Rav Rat Virus Beetle. Uh... All right. We've got Xander's Lounge with the runes. Another clone. Nice, clever impersonator. A little, little deeper cut on it this time. Yeah. Josh, none of our players today are Brandon. Brandon is uh, Dr. PP Poo Poo MD. Maybe you just wanted me to say 
Dr. P.P. Poo Poo M.D., but joke's on you. I've said Dr. P.P. Poo Poo M.D. many times in my life. Yeah, I like the clever impersonator pickup here. If we're gonna if we're gonna have clone and copy artifact, it makes sense. Hammer of Bogarden, the nostalgia keeps on coming. We're playing my burn deck from early two thousands. <laughs> I gotta call I gotta call my friend Mark and be like, hey, remember that deck you played at regionals that one year? It's a uh, <laughs> it's 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 in this VRD, bud. <laughs> We just need a we just need a slith firewalker and we're there. <laughs> Hell yeah, he's not gonna draft creatures. No, just the ragavan. You know what? Honestly, if you're committed to the dash life, I understand it. But at least draft Zergo Bell Striker to go with your ragavan. Now, come on. <laughs> I don't know rhetoric. We're gonna slow the party down. Yeah, this ain't no party. This ain't no disco. One one spell each turn, please. Fair cards. Darien weathering the storm against Chad. I love it. Oh, Elvish Spirit Guide. I like that pick. I, I, I have been a big fan of Simeon Spirit Guide. It's been really good for me in VRD, so I like the Elvish. Uh, Rankle's good here, though. Rankle, this is both like an enabler and an alternative threat. I Rankle like the is, Rankle a lot. Rankle is a great backup plan. I think, I think using Rankle like Liliana to constrain hands is a fantastic way to play. Yeah. But I love reducing resources, so. Yeah. Elvish Spirit Guide just makes me want to draft uh, No Land Belcher, even though I know that's a terrible idea. I always ran, when, I, when I, I was a Nick Fitz player, and I always ran a one of Elvish Spirit Guide in my Nick Fitz for an extra little oomph. Yeah. Silvergill Adept, great merfolk. Yeah. And Marrow Regery, another another uh Lord. Patrick took Orm's chant last time too, so he's a big fan of that card. Yep, now I, I believe he doesn't who has Pete has the uh Scepter. Pete has a scepter. I love I love Scepter Chant, so Oh, double spirit guide. He's now does Eric take a... Uh... Legion of the Tangle to go with it, you know, and just say, uh... Gosh, I hope so. Uh, Darian... Oh, Life Force Sighting! Darian oh, has been on your, love... uh, on your Color Hate page, because he picked up Life, life yeah. Force. Uh, Life love Force... Some life Force, please. Life Force, the reverse version of Death Grip. Um, countering black spells versus countering green spells. Uh, Life Force, yeah. um... One of many cards from the early days of Magic... Where I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I, I think the problem with no land Belcher is less is not the the fact that you you like the spell lands are fine. It's just going to be very inconsistent. I think is the big issue. Um, and there's not enough. <laughs> Weirdly, there aren't enough spell lands. Uh, Pete going early on burglar rat. Just says I don't care what you're taking. No one's taking my burglar rat. Like no one's taking my rat. Whatever. I, I'm no. gonna go get a beer. You, you won't take my rat. I'll take my rat. We are we are coming up on round forty six. <laughs> Mark making his pick early too. Just says no one's drafting my last pick. Tempest caller. Let's take a look. A quick look at Tempest caller, just for reference. This is the Murfolk from a... Ixalan. That taps all their creatures. Kill cell. Yeah, this is the, this is the celest, uh, the uh, the cryptic command that we have on Ixalan. All right, Rune Flare Trap, like Rune Flare Trap. Wow. Oh. How many cards? Did you... Who's drawing three cards? Just Mark. It's just Mark. It's Mark. Cards. Drawing three cards. The wheel, the wheel of fortune. Oh, there's a wheel. Right. Eric has or Eric has a wheel. And there's a wheel at home. Uh dark 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 Deal. Some Dark Deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the wheel we have in black. Pete picks up Pack Rat. 
46th pick oh. Pat Rat, Pat Rat for Pete. That's huge. That's a good card. It's a good card. Pete. Pat Rat Gallagher readers. Pete says, literally nothing else matters. I have drafted Pat Rat. My previous 45 cards don't matter because I have Pat Rat. Led Tasso showed up for that one. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm so happy to see Pack Rat. Such a good card. All right. What's, Chad, what's Chad's statement here? How can we yeah. beat Rune Flare Trap? You got, a, you got a meme with your last pick. Ramanap Ruins. I was hoping for a Hazaret. Honestly, a Hazaret would have been great. Dawnbringer Cleric Dawnbreaker. from Heidi. What does that one do? Dawnbringer Cleric is from AFR. It blows up enchantments, gains you life, or exiles a card from a graveyard. Portcullis. Oh, that's uh, yeah. a funny pick. The, so Portcullis says, how many how many creatures are allowed to be on the battlefield? Two. Two at a time. Everything else is kept out by the Portcullis. <laughs> Eric with that 46 pick, Thassa's Oracle, to go with his Tainted Pact and Demonic Consultation. Patrick picks up Chain of Smog, which... I mean, he's probably fine discarding. He's not combo, but he's targeting. He's targeting himself. Yeah. And Caterberg. So he's not comboing off with it, but he's targeting himself to pitch reanimate targets. Yes. Yeah. And Caterberg with Tempest Caller. Like at what point? At what point, if you're Patrick, you're just like, I'll, <laughs> I'll take one with nothing. Just hand into graveyard, please. You take on burial rites. You take one with nothing. You dump your hand into the graveyard. You call it a day. <laughs> This is this yes, is how I, this is a, yeah. this is why I don't brew decks. This is why I iterate because my ideas are one with nothing on burial rights. All right, so uh, that's the draft. Um, let's we, let's let's talk a little bit about about what we've got before we finish up here. Um, yeah. Who do you who's deck? Whose deck do you think is the most exciting? Not necessarily the best, but the most exciting. Like which which deck is the sweetest? Um I mean Darian's has got to be the sweetest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's good, but it's the sweetest. I'm super into any deck that is trying to cast Tangle into Moments Peace. That is that is like my my life goal is to cast Moments Peace and and win games of magic. Um Yeah. I mean, Pete has we've we've. I would have. I said Pete last time. We've seen the Pete deck before, and that like yeah, yeah. I love the Pete deck, but we've seen it. Uh, so so Pete learned a lesson the last time in having better mana. Yes, and he has that. He has that. Pete still has some lessons. He's got the Pete deck. He's got better mana, and he's got Pack Rat. Um, Heidi's like, I guess. I guess at the end of the day, my my pick is Heidi. For the sweetest deck, actually, because of Chun Li and and Armageddon, I just want Chun Li and Armageddon Heidi to is, happen. Heidi's really close. Like Heidi's close to something that I've been pondering on already. So, like, I like some of what Heidi's going here, but it just like it ended up all over the place for me. So yeah, Darian's my sweet deck vote. Uh, and uh, who's who's Eric's winning? pretty close. Who's winning this thing? Who's our winner? I mean. I'm just gonna have to go with the focused, uh, the focused cold calculation of Caterberg again. I think Caterberg's gonna take down the second Saint Lotus presents. I I think it's uh, for me. It's either Caterberg or Alex. Uh, Alex has this really good artifact, really strong artifact deck. Uh, but I think I do think Mark's draft is better. Uh, Alex Alex is depends, Alex is gonna be very build dependent. He's got a lot of main deck cards, and I've got a lot of questions about what's gonna make the main. Agreed. It's really close. It's really good. Uh, there's so many good pieces. I think he needs a few more answers. Um, I don't think Alex can stop other people from doing the things they want to do. I don't think so either, and I don't think he's going to go off his his ways of winning are very slow, and I don't think he does an, yeah. enough saying no in the meantime. Um, but yeah. I, I think, I think Caterberg, Alex, and, and probably, uh, mm, it's close after that. Like Heidi, Patrick, and Darian, and Chad. I don't know. This is, this is a pretty. No revoker. No revoker. No, I mean, so uh, like no revoker. no revoker drafted. 
Yeah, no, no Revoker, no Needle. We're missing some classic sideboard cards for artifact decks. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to find out how this goes. Uh, if you're not following us on Twitter, at St. Lotus MTG is... Uh, you'll, you'll see is, stuff there throughout the day from Mark. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're not on the Discord, uh, get on the Discord. Let me... Uh, there's there's a link to the Discord there in the chat if you haven't already gotten in. It's a great place to play asynchronous VRDs. Uh, if you haven't done a VRD before, we've got plenty of people who are available to help you and even coach you through your first draft. I know Steven is helping somebody out right now with their first draft. Uh, they're bouncing yeah. ideas I, off I, Steven. I actually myself in a draft and pulled myself out of it and helped someone out. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. I love the fact that we're getting new people interested in this format. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. Um, our next live VRD is on, is it August 13th, I want to say? That feels right. It's, yeah, August 13th, I'm pretty sure. Yep, August 13th. I will probably not be in attendance um, for for personal scheduling reasons. Unfortunately, I will probably not make that one, but... I've uh, I'm I'm very excited about it. You know, I'll, I'll probably stop. I'll 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 roll in, stop by, and 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 maybe 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 come say hi on camera. But I will not be able to be there all day, most likely. Um, all righty. Come on down to Discord. Stop by again right here, right right at this same bat channel, August thirteenth, for our next live St. Lotus VRD, St. Lotus Nine. But uh, I think that's it. Thanks, everybody. We're out. Thanks, everybody.